Council meeting to order for February 22nd, 2022 to 2222 on a Tuesday to order. Uh, present in the annex with us are all town council members, town manager John Elsesser, and uh, also joining us virtually is town finance director Amanda Backus. Would you please stand for the first question? Is the recording supposed to be paused? Um, it was paused while we were getting this. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Recording in progress. I of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I don't see anybody in the audience for audience of citizens, so seeing no one, we will move on to the acceptance of minutes. Can we have a motion to approve the minutes with um, my suggested revisions? So, so move. Second. Or, yeah, however you want to do it. Um, motion by Marty Milkovic, seconded by John Hand. Any discussion on the minutes? They were pretty good. Yeah, agreed. Thank you for your catches. There's very little to catch. Anybody else? All, right. uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes with my suggested revisions, please say aye. Aye. That is unanimous, thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda. Can we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Okay, motion by John Hand, seconded by Marty Milkovic. Does anybody want to remove anything from the consent agenda? All those of, in favor of approving of the consent agenda as it is, please say aye. Aye. That is unanimous. We're making such good progress tonight. Yeah. All right, six. Uh, moving on to reports. I just have a, a couple of things I'd like to say. <clears throat> First of all, I want to congratulate our police department for their successful grant application for DUI enforcement. I'm always pleased when our departments can bring extra dollars back into Coventry um, to support the good work that they're doing. I also want to remind everyone that uh, March 3rd, next Thursday, will be council chair's office hours from 6.30 to 7.30 at the uh, Booth and Library. So if you're able to, please come join me and share your thoughts or ask your questions. I also wanted to share that uh, two letters have gone out uh, under my name as council chair to legislative committees about proposed bills that are important to our community. One is proposed bill 5086, which is before the Joint Committee on Finance, Revenue, and Bonding. This is an act establishing a personal income tax deduction for certain homeowners with crumbling foundations. Um, this is an income tax deduction set forth that could be really important to affected property owners to pursue the next steps towards remediation and begin to climb out of what's a very devastating situation as they're waiting for other assistance. Um, so that's something that we're all very familiar with, some of us more personally than, um, than others. The other is House Bill 517. Um, this is an, an act allowing a personal income tax deduction for stipends that are paid to volunteer firefighters and ambulance members. Uh, you all know that Coventry isn't the only community having a great deal of difficulty uh, retaining volunteer firefighters and volunteer ambulance members, ambulance service members. So, and this is something we've talked about um, before as a council, you know, what can we do to, to help out something along these lines and if this can happen at the state level that would certainly be an incentive for people who are always putting you know, their lives on the line and giving up a lot of their personal time so hopefully we'll see those advance Lisa. yes so when you talk about personal income tax this relates to the state state income tax yeah because the state legislature can't do anything for federal <laughs> um, but yes this is state income tax uh, and I, I want to thank Laura Stone, who jumped in very last minute to help craft these letters. 
and we'll get them sent out and we're going to watch for their progress in the legislature so when there are further opportunities to advocate we can and um, John is the one who's done a great job of sending out some alerts and uh, pointing out so CCM sends out legislative alerts I think on a daily basis. Yeah, I'll try to screen them quickly to say which ones may be relevant to us. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of them but we try to stay on top of the ones that are you know, really going to impact our community. And then I just want to end with a, a lovely letter that was sent to John and the person who wrote the letter asked that it be shared at our council meeting. Um, I'm going to read most of it out loud. I'm going to leave out some personally, personal identi personally identifying information. I'm writing to you about my brother who was a volunteer in the North Coventry Fire Department for almost 30 years under the guidance of both Dick Cooper and Noel Miller, retiring around 2010. Three years ago, he had a severe accident. He has regained enough mobility to lead a mostly pain-free life, but obviously he was forced to retire early from his job of 30 years at a nursing home. In September of last year, my brother received a letter informing him he was due to receive $140 monthly payments from the Firefighters Pension Trust, which he began receiving in October. While this may not seem like much, it does pay for his Medicare Advantage and leaves a little left over for his bank account. This letter is to thank you for helping to push the pension for volunteer firefighters into existence and for anyone who might have had a hand in creating the trust for Coventry's first responders. If it's possible, I would like you to read this into the record at the next town meeting. I feel it's important, especially in the current political climate, for people to hear when government works for its citizens. Mr. Elsesser, your service has been immeasurable for the town of Coventry and will be greatly missed when you pass the baton. So that's just a really nice, nice shout out to our community. And it's important to share those things. We hear a lot about the negatives. I, I just um, had a need recently to interact with a police department in another town on behalf of a family member, and I just sent in a compliment to the sergeant who I spoke with because he was wonderful and did a great job, and I think we just don't often enough think to pay the compliments as opposed to send out the complaint. So this was lovely to hear. Are there any other counselors who wish to report? I got a couple things. Pardon? I was happy to see that we're going to be receiving, the town is going to be receiving a $350,000 grant to build out trails uh, that I guess were actually set up in the 20s, first set up in the 20s, through Nathan Hale Forest and to connect that to the Hop River uh, Trail. That's really great. I guess we were one of the largest or the largest uh, grant from, that the town received from the state for trails. And then, most of you probably saw the free uh, classroom air filters that were distributed to our schools uh, last week. And it's just amazing. And we're so lucky to have uh, UConn next to us and, and Eastern too, uh, because uh, of all that great community work they do, and in particular this, that will provide uh, filters in each, each classroom, I guess, will have one to help, uh, not just, of course, with COVID, but just with dust, probably. So that's really great. That's it. Thank you. Anybody else? John? French? Yeah, um, yeah, I had an interesting week. Uh, since it's becoming budget season, uh, I had a few minutes and I stopped into town hall in the administrative office. And I, I thought I wanted to pick up a packet of the finance committee's uh, packet as well as the agenda. And I was outright totally refused any of that information. That is information that is privy to all board members. Uh, Matthew and John should also receive at the same time that finance goes out. We should get their packet. Steering should go to everybody who's not on steering. There's no reason that this should be a hidden thing. And it was very clear that I could not have it whatsoever because I am not a finance member, a uh, subcommittee finance member. Uh, if you really wanted to push it, I, I'll start going to FOI. But there's no did reason, you, if, if, if I may, John. Well, can I ask my did you look on the town website where the agenda is published? Let me, let me the share. The agenda, John, the agenda, I was told, you could go on the website to get. Correct. Correspondence and things like that that the finance committee is going to see is not. The no. agenda should, so what I'm saying, is for us board members who will ultimately vote on any subcommittee's 
recommendation, I don't understand why a board member should just not receive it usually on, on a Thursday or Friday when they're released. That way, I could review it, John, Matthew could review it, and say, gee, that's something interesting, and how are they going to get to this? And then we'll wait for, you know, the Finance Committee minutes to see how it all pulled together. So I find it very off that a board member would be refused any of this information, which is public information. So let me make sure I'm understanding you. You just want to make sure that when that agenda gets sent out to Finance Committee members, that or it goes whatever to the, the packet, council. Whatever the packets go to steering, right. or whatever packets go to finance, get pushed out to the other board members, council members. I shouldn't say board, I'm used yeah. to yeah, council members, so that they're aware of what's going on. That's all it is. And it's information that is, um, no doubt, of interest to a board, uh, council member, as well as it's legally uh, able to be there. Because so if, if, I can, if I could make the meeting, then I will see all the processing and what was the different uh, things that happened that night. If, if so I may, just... I, really, I have to, I have to, this, I have to. Okay. Uh, what John asked for was to be on the email list uh, to go to finance. And that sometimes has other scheduling issues and, and committee issues that go to finance that hasn't been vetted yet. Uh, and that's why we have the committee process. Uh, and our statement was, we don't have an authorization to add people to that list. We did say you could sign up for automatic delivery of the agendas, that the minute the agenda is posted, you get notified, you click on a link, and you have it. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, what he wants is to be on the address list for the committee. And as a point of information, the agenda has all the attachments as links, so all I get is the agenda link, and then I see what they If that's all you there. get, but we get a steering, we pack packets. You don't get materials that are not on the agenda. So, that's the but the, the whole point is, is that we shouldn't have to go throughout the web to get an agenda when it can easily be clicked to all board members, top council members, I keep forgetting where I am, uh, that it should be viable uh, it, to, to I just don't understand what the issue was other than that, and I just want to bring it up to the board because this whole board should be privy to all this information. So I'm just going to explain again. Yeah. When the agenda is set and ready to go, everything's attached that's going to be discussed and reviewed at the steering meeting or at the finance meeting. Correct. It's illegal to introduce something else. Like you can't. No, that's what I'm asking. Right. So. You're, by looking at the, by getting the agenda, you're getting the same thing everybody on the subcommittee is getting. People on the subcommittee aren't getting something different. Uh, have you gotten something different? Well, I'm just... In which case, always, you should alert me. There's always emails that come out, even, say, tonight, we, the whole council got an email. That's yes. not... So, well, and actually, if you're going to bring up that email, that was an email that John French sent directly to our finance director, and it has already been made clear that that communication shouldn't even happen. That communications with finance questions go through the finance director, and communications about steering go through the steering director, or you go directly to the town manager. That's how a town manager form of government works, which I'm sure you understand from your experience in Windsor. And I also you, said so in the past, our staff got... time should not be getting taken up by every single council member at this table, and that's why we have that process, and that's why. It's always been the policy of this council for as long as I've served on it. And so, you know, if you're going to bring that up, that was inappropriate to begin with. And I'm glad that we all were privy to those responses tonight. But that's kind of what he's saying, that there sometimes are these emails that go to the Finance Committee. That they might get email hasn't come to the Finance Committee. Nobody has seen that it's email. It's just an example, right. and I get it. That example. You get emails all the time leading up to a meeting. Yes. Here's, here's the town manager's background memo. And yes, that goes to the That whole goes house. to everybody. But if it was a finance meeting, it would only go to four of us, not all seven of us. That kind of thing. All right. Well, so I just want to address this really quickly, and then I did have a few things I wanted to report on. Uh, that are Again, I wasn't finished, but if you want to jump in on this one discussion, then we can go through there then I would just state that I am 
I cannot recall a single email that went out right before a finance meeting that related to finance since I've taken over as finance chair. So, you know, I appreciate your concerns, and to the extent that happens, you know, I'm happy to share whatever we, I am unaware of that ever having happened. Everything since I've been finance chair <laughs> that we have discussed has been attached to the agenda. And I'll be honest, because I can be a little bit scattered, the way I get to it is I go to my email, find where the agenda is, click on it once I'm in the meeting. I don't download documents in advance. I don't, you know, I, I go through clicking on, on the link the same way a member of the public would, the same way anyone else could. So that's, that's just been my practice. I understand other people do things differently, and we have moved away from um, printed copies of things. So there's not like a, a physical packet either. So, I don't, it, I don't think there's anything since I've taken over as finance chair that, that you have missed. But I would also just note that I, I find this to be a little bit disappointing because I have asked Councilman French in the past on given topics, I've invited you to contact me directly to reach out to me about whatever concerns may exist. And you've never reached out to me. We've never had a conversation outside of this context. So I just want to say again, you know, if you have a concern, you are welcome to reach out to me. Obviously, as Lisa covers council, <laughs> council chair, um, Thomas covered, Councilman Thomas, uh, you know, if you have questions for Amanda, I'm happy to pass those along as well. You know. But I, I would just really appreciate being part of that conversation, which I understand is consistent with the practice and policy in the past. That was the point I guess I wanted to bring up. This this is past practice. Yes. It's so we're not doing anything differently than previous town councils have done. Okay, thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, so I'll well, take another step. Just because it was done that way doesn't mean it's correct. And that was the problem I always had is we always did things this way and I had to change a lot of things in the community I came from because everybody's you don't see the trees when you live in the forest. So I, had, I did send back, when Amanda sent back to me that I sent it to John, I said, oh, geez. And I sent an apology to Amanda saying, I'm sorry that I didn't go through the right procedure. Now, that was back on Tuesday. OK, and then uh, from that point, I actually contacted you on Thursday morning about adding a library to the agenda. You said it was too late. You couldn't do it. Lo and behold, Friday, agenda has changed. And still, you didn't add the library to the agenda because John wanted to add his CIP plan to it. What I said to you was, and this was before John realized he had left off the CIP, what I said to you was, the agenda's already been published with three executive sessions added to it. I didn't think we could add an additional executive session, but that one of the executive sessions on the agenda might be relevant to be able to talk about whatever you want to talk about with the documents that were sent out. Okay, now to go on to that, from what I understand with FOI, when I used to have to do it, you actually, you, you guys go to the point of putting all three on so you can discuss whatever you want in, in executive session. When I went through FOI school and stuff, it was basically to say, uh, you're gonna go into uh, executive session, look at uh, contracts slash library. And that's how we would do it, so people would, specifically know what you're doing. What you're doing is you're basically covering all the bases that we're going to go in and talk about anything, and nobody has any clue what you're talking about. That is not how I understood it for uh, So I think that's something that could be looked at, so that when you go into something, you talk about contract negotiations, say, fire department. Uh, you're talking about contract negotiations, library. You focus on what you're supposed to be talking about. And here, it's clear cut. When you go into executive sessions, you read all three possibilities of going to executive sessions, and you go in, and you're not, nothing's invalid, okay? But I understood you should always have a, a point of interest of where you're, where you're going to talk. So, I can ask um, the town manager if he would talk to our attorney about that. He's generally right. Okay, so we can talk about what that and how to you just you add, add what you want to talk. You don't really agenda. even need to, to do it on the agenda, but in the motion, you should probably do it. So we can we can make it clear. There's, okay. There's room for, for okay, and that's why I asked you about the library. Absolutely. Um, now, 
talking about the library, I want to thank you that uh, after I went in on one meeting it was refused. And, and again, I'm going to go back to packets. I do receive paper packets because I want to make notes. So packets are available. And when there's theory, I go in on a Friday or Saturday and I pick up a packet and it's more than just an agenda. That's what I'm asking for is whatever you're one of you. All right, so that's that part of it. Hold on one more time. The, the, what you pick up from, say, steering, that's more than the, the agenda. That's correct because there, are, you know, when you look online, there are lots of attachments to the agenda. So if you're going to have a printed copy, then all that's going to be printed out for you as well. It's not stuff that's hidden though. It's what everybody has access to in the whole wide world who goes and pulls our pulls the agenda. They also have access to all those things. Okay, but I'm it's just saying not. It is much easier <laughs> on that Thursday or Friday. They just hit everybody's name and to have the agendas go out instead of me hunting and picking and looking for an agenda somewhere else, which I shouldn't have to work that hard for. So we can I, certainly. I just personally I appreciate. I do. I do personally appreciate knowing that I'm saving the taxpayers a little bit of money by using the device that was issued to us as council members to access the agenda online and all of the attachments. I'm not using someone's, a staff member's time to print this out, create a packet, pay for the printing, pay for the paper. Um, so we do have these devices, John. I, I get it that it's easier for taking notes, but mm -hmm. um, and so we have the devices easy. for a reason, it is saving us a little bit of money. Yeah. Well, that's your preference. Yes. All right. okay. So we certainly can talk about when an agenda goes out, it goes to the whole council. Okay. Um, but I also want to just make it clear for people listening that when it goes out to council, at that point, it's a published agenda. And if anybody in the community or beyond is interested in getting that agenda, you can sign up for an alert. And as soon as it's, it's published on the website, you will get an alert and you will have access to that agenda. I have alerts for all kinds of agendas. Um, including in other communities where I want to follow what's happening, um, say on, on a planning and zoning commission or whatever. So people people can certainly do that and get those alerts. And if you're not sure how to do that, uh, you can contact me, but it's it's on the website. You can sign up for all kinds of alerts. Did you have more you wanted to read? Yep, I have more, and it's going back to the library. Uh, the library schedule is, is really robust, and the problem is that we shouldn't be going out to bid. In my, my view, and I'm, t I'm going to go on record that I'm opposed to going out to bid on the library project until we have signed contracts between the town and the library board. There's, we are playing with danger here when we're not getting agreements. And if we're going to be in the middle of breaking ground and everything else and we have a dispute with the library board, we're all in trouble. This is to protect the town. It's also to protect the library board that we both know where we're working through, and that's it. And once that's been signed, sealed, and delivered, by all means, it's nice to get the, this library project going, but this project should not be, have gone as far as it has without agreements between the library board and the town council. Um, yeah, and I guess that basically it. We'll get into furthermore when we get to uh, the one to two percent with the school, because yeah, that's an agenda item. So that's an agenda item. We'll get that. into it. I was just surprised that we didn't have minutes, so we knew what happened that night. Minutes of what? Yeah, finance committee. Those are not out yet. Um, finance the committee. Clerk's daughter died. Yeah, so we don't have that information. So you understand that this is an unusual incident. No, that I our, understand our that. So I'm going to ask that we're going to push that off, but we'll do, talk about that when we get there. You, well, you understand who's chairing this town council, correct? Please? You understand who's chair of this town no, council. I'm so please don't you. tell me how I'm going to run a meeting. No, no, I'm not. I'm just saying right. that well, I'm the way you're speaking. Ask. Ah, that's better. No, that's what I thought I said. Thank if you. I didn't, that's no, what that I is not how you said it. So oh. we're trying to keep decorum here and show respect for one another. And I would appreciate that you send that respect my way. Thank you. Any other council members? John? Hand. Just as a follow on to some of the discussion over these topics here I would say that I personally signed up to get the alerts for all of the agendas that get published for the town council and its subcommittees 
And in the interest of not having to spend any time looking for it on the town website, it's when they say you get an alert, you get an email with a link in it, and you click the link and boom, it's on your screen. It's that simple. It could not be more straightforward or easy. Once you, all you have to do is sign up for it. It's so simple. I think I, I, I have great faith that you can do that. I have an understanding. I am able to do that. I just don't feel that it's necessary. Thank you. Uh, that's a good suggestion, and we'll certainly follow up on that. Okay. Love it. <laughs> so, um, on, on another note entirely, the first thing I just wanted to note is that there are still a few days left if people want to recognize an employee through the employee recognition um, survey that was sent out in the winter newsletter. So, I believe those nominations close March 1st, 2022. Um, you can also find on the website a copy of the newsletter, and there's one of those QR codes. You just scan it. Very easy. So um, I wanted to encourage people to do that. And then the other thing I just wanted to note, um, because um, Chairwoman Thomas mentioned this uh, a couple meetings ago, the uh, reading challenge with the Booth and Dimmick Memorial Library is coming to an end. So this is your last opportunity to log books. The Town of Coventry, the goal was 500 books uh, by the end of February, and we're at 476. Um, so we're, we're so close, guys. We can do it. Um, so I just want to encourage folks who have not participated so far to, to log in there as well. I'm excited. Thank you. Matthew. Yes, thanks. Uh, also, uh, back to the library. Uh, I wanted to congratulate Kayla Fontaine, who is the head of teen services and technology at our own Booth and Demick Library, for having recently been selected to be a reviewer for School Library Journal, uh, which is one of the most widely used selection tools among youth services librarians in both schools and public libraries nationwide. In this role, Kayla will periodically review, uh, receive assignments that align with the genres and subjects that she has expertise in. And as a fellow librarian, I want to express how lucky we are to have Kayla working at our town library. So again, congratulations to Kayla. Thank you. I know that's probably especially meaningful for you considering Indeed. the role you play at our grammar school. <laughs> nice connection. Julie. Matt, do you, you mentioned she has specific genres. What, do you know what they are? She didn't specify oh, which okay. genres, but I mean, so School Library Journal um, would, people would re be reviewing, for instance, um, picture books for younger children. But she is uh, teen services, so she'd be reading uh she'd be reading and reviewing like those ya young adult books among others anybody else have something to report okay. let's move on to our finance committee report Robin. okay um so our last finance committee meeting was on february 15th 2022 um and i do want to thank everybody who was there because it was a very long meeting so thank you for your uh, your patience and your diligence in staying with us through the whole thing um partially because of the chock full agenda i'm trying something new this month which is that i have asked the other members of the finance committee to take pieces um to report back on so that people don't listen to me talk um too too much um you know we had a number of things discussed um, the very first thing we had was a very informative EMS fund discussion, and that's going to be addressed by Councilwoman Blanchard. But I do want to take this opportunity myself to say a big thank you to Jim McLaughlin and Bud Meyer for coming out and having that discussion with us. It was very informative. Um, we also, the other big topic that we discussed at quite some length was a list of potential uses for the American Rescue um, Fund uh, funding, plan funding, ARPA funding, um, and Councillor Milkovic will discuss that at greater length. But again, I just want to say thank you to Town Manager John Alsasser and Finance Director Amanda Backhouse for that very um, informative and helpful proposal. So I know how much work went into that. Uh, we discussed 
potential ARP cultural and arts grant application uses. Um, this recommendation was the culmination of months of work in soliciting proposals and working with the various organizations and individuals. Um, so we're very grateful to everyone who applied and everyone who went through the process of reviewing those applications. Um, this comes up a little bit later on the agenda, but I did want to highlight the potential recipients include the Data Case Sculpture Field, the Coventry Lions Club, and the Coventry Historical Society. Um, we did, we did address and discuss the Board of Education's request to increase their 1% fund to a 2% fund, consistent with state statute allowing as much. Um, as part of that discussion, we also recognized and heard from Board of Education Chair um, Jennifer Beausoleil, who explained a little bit about the background of the fund and what those funds have been used for in the past. Again, we'll discuss that more later on on the agenda. Uh, we discussed going out to bid for audit firms. Um, this is something we haven't done in some time. Um, and we think that they, we may be able to get more competitive pricing or at least re-examine the pricing that we are getting from the Larson. Uh, and finally, we discussed whether or not to uh, we need additional surety bond coverage given some changes in insurance coverage and plans that we've had. Um, those sort of hit the high points for me. Um, again, as always, I encourage anyone to reach out with any questions and left that. Um, I guess I open the floor to Councilwoman Blanchard, if that's okay with you, Madam Chair, it's to discuss report. the EMS fund. All right. Well, I can tell you that I really appreciate our fire and EMS crews and our police department. So I did a little bit of looking to see how to begin this or try to keep it factual but I want to say that stakeholders or citizens expect that when they request the fire department to respond to an emergency the fire department will be available to respond and that the fire department will deliver the services necessary to resolve an emergency situation I think that's something that everybody expects in their town and we're fortunate to also have a police department. So in September of 2020, the town of Coventry, with the town council's approval, contracted with Vintech for, I'm gonna take this off because, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear it very well. We contracted with Vintech for 24 hour a day, seven days a week ambulance coverage. Since that decision was made, our response time was greatly increased. Prior to that, in 2019, we had 42 EMTs and eight EDRs. Today, we have 21 EMTs and five EDRs. Can you just say how, what the letters mean? For I honestly, <laughs> we'd have to be guessing. I do not know exactly what the acronyms are. So EMT is an emergency medical technician. Okay. So and the, the other is a driver, basically. Oh, emergency. Okay. Because you. you have to have one of each in the ambulance, correct? Uh, or you have to have these two people. Yeah, in the you could have two EMTs. <laughs> you have to have an EMT uh, in the back. Um, you can't have two drivers. Uh, but you have to have two people in an ambulance. All right. So back to what I'm so for the fiscal year 2022-2023, the annual cost for providing this ambulance service is estimated to be $768,239. Therefore, we are projecting a negative fund balance of $399,304 at the end of the fiscal year. The factors that have led us to this point are the paid personnel for the ambulance, Medicare calls, where we get paid 50% of what we charge for these calls, Medicaid calls, which pay us 30% of what we charge for these calls, our fire department, our fire administrator, our EMS personnel are trying to work on solutions. Um, our fire administrator has applied for and received a catch-up provision rate increase that was approved in fiscal year 2020. In fiscal year 2021, he applied for the maximum allowable rate and we received the maximum allowable 4.1% increase. Our fire and EMS are always taking steps to reduce costs. 
In 2018, the number of ambulances was reduced from three down to two. At this time, the town council or any of us should seek legislative support to increase the reimbursement rate from Medicare or Medicaid if possible. We could explore a live-in college student program. They could serve our town, they could have housing over in the fire department with some, we probably have to make some changes to the department, but it's somewhat set up for it. We could appeal to members to commit to covering shifts. And if we have volunteer members that are willing to cover shifts, we could have less paid coverage. Our fire department and EMS is looking if they can charge for non-transport calls. There are times where people call 911 for service, the ambulance will show up and they may refuse to be transported. And then at this time, we don't charge for that call. But that is a possible avenue where we may be losing some revenue that we are entitled to. Our fire and EMS are looking to explore hiring per diems versus Vintech. And the last suggestion that I could come up with is that the town council could put some American Rescue Plan monies into this fund to help us catch up until some of these solutions maybe start turning the corner and heading us in a better direction. A survey's been sent to the town council members. One was sent to the members of the fire department, department and one was available to citizens. Now the board of fire officers will review and compile the results and I know that we as council members, I saw it come through to us for review too. So the last thing I think that we talked about was that the town manager will need to probably explain during his budget presentation the state of this fund, why it is, where it is, or what our council plans are to, to help send it in a better direction. And he could also include that in his, what we call the budget and brief that goes in our newsletter type of thing. And I have emailed this to, um, John's executive administrative person, Laura Stone, John and Amanda, because I didn't know who was doing the minutes for tonight. Great. Thank you. So they have to make it much easier for them. And we do we do have it in our ARPA plan. Right. Am I remembering that correctly? Maybe um, not. Um, Amanda and I have discussed about it. Amanda, is it on our list? It's a proposed use. It has not been approved. No dollar amount has been formally approved by the council at this hospital. I think it's at the very end. So um, thank you very much, You're Councilman Blanchard. Um, the only thing that I would just add to that is that the um, Fire and EMS, they are currently conducting a five-year strategic plan or updating their five-year strategic plan. And so these sorts of solutions are not, what we discussed, are not something that is likely to be implemented with great effect within the next year. So this projected um, deficit in that fund, this is not something we'll be able to drastically turn the corner on immediately, and it will have an impact on the budget. So I just want everyone to understand that that's where we're coming from, but that the contract with Vintech does give us some flexibility so that if we find a way to make um, to, to make up for some of those Vintech hours, we will be able to just call them and say, thank you very much, we no longer need you at XYZ time, and, and hopefully save some of that money. Um, but that won't be immediately reflected in the budget because we have to be conservative. Um, okay. And then for um, proposed ARPA fund uses, uh, Councilman Milkovic, would you be willing to address yeah, that? Yeah, uh, we talked about that at the Finance Committee meeting. Uh, back in March of 2021, Congress and President Biden signed a bill called the American Rescue Plan Act that makes funds available to states and localities to offset the effects of the pandemic. Coventry was fortunate that under that we're going to get about $3.67 million. Uh, and what we had in, in the finance community was a discussion about possible uses of those funds. And uh, all for uh, non-recurring items for the most part, a few like as Julie mentioned, possibly to uh, offset the losses that we are seeing due to the pan partly due to the pandemic and the EMS fund. And uh, it's really just a good, a good thing. It's a good 
this way. But what it does point out to me is that we do have a number of uh, non-recurring, really kind of capital items that we're behind on. And I think it go goes that maybe over the years we have not kept up with some of those items. And I know we're going to be talking about the capital improvement plan later, but uh, ARPA is going to help us kind of catch up with some of that. So the, the only thing that I would add to that, thank you, Councilman Milkovic, is um, a number of the big ticket items that we discussed have been discussed at council before. The one I wanted to mention that is somewhat um, new to our discussion is the Newtonix renewal, which is just over $100,000. And the only point that I want to make there is that that's a subscription type situation where that would be for three years of of use that is a backup system that both the Board of Education and the town use. Um, it's, a, it's important to have that backup system. And you know, we talked about whether it's likely we'll continue to use them into the future. We, we don't really know, but at least paying for this three years would get us ahead lately. So, so in, no, if, if you don't mind, just in uh, listening in on the finance meeting, I think on that particular item, isn't it that we get a price break by buying it all at once, but like a significant savings of money that it's absolutely like worth it to do with dollars or yeah. something like that, right? I don't know if Amanda wants to throw the dollar figure that I know you have on the tip of your tongue. <laughs> we save about twenty to 30000 if we go the three year, and we do feel we will use them for the next three years, and then maybe evaluate during that time if it's working or not. Another important item is Board of Ed has already budgeted $52,000 in their operating budget. So if the American Rescue Plan funding can pay for that now, that's something that they won't have to cover in their fiscal year and operating budget. So it's a good win on both sides for everyone. But it is something that we think is necessary, at least for the next few years. Maybe I should clarify that these are just discussions on these items. They haven't been voted on, but they will come here to the council to be voted on when when they're uh, ready after the finance committee has reviewed it. Thank All right, that, that's <coughs> everything I had about finance committee subject to additional questions. Thank you. Any questions for Julie or Marty or Robin? Great, thank you. Very thorough. John, is there anything you would, oh, actually, first I want to go back to, um, Julie had talked about letters to legislators about getting an increase in med Medicaid reimbursement um, and some of the other potential ways that we could seek assistance. And so um, I guess that should be a finance agenda to talk about drafting something, or do, should we just have consensus to get something drafted for our, to go? For I, would, our I would urge you, if you could reach a consensus, Sooner? just to have it done, because it's a short session and um, the committee hearings may be done by the end of this yeah, already started so. so what would do we want to support a letter requesting um, an increase in Medicaid reimbursement for ambulance calls yes um, and how about um, just remind me Julie um, if somebody refuses transport do we already have the option to bill for that or do we need authorization to do that as well we can refusal? we can as long as the service is provided Okay. Yeah. So when you go there, you know, they, they actually use Supplies. certain disposable things. Mm -hmm. They take your temperature, they take your vitals and so forth. And if they refuse transit, they, you know, besides the gas and getting there and, and calling them out, um, there's other expendables. Uh, you got to clean everything up, you know. So maybe a proposal for that could go to finance then, because we want to make sure. That's still being worked on. I know Bud was still looking into what exactly qualifies as oh, a non-transport service versus something we just can't bill at all. So we're not currently billing any of that. That's something that we worked into the billing schedule going forward. And we can add that to finance as an ongoing issue as Bud has more information. Sure. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Or whenever he's ready. But, um, that would probably be helpful. Okay, so we have consensus that we want to get a letter in to the appropriate committee. Thank you. Anything else on finance? Madam Chair, related. Um, I'm only remembering that there was some conversation back on budget um, budget meetings. Mm -hmm. I think there might be a date missing from our list of budget meetings that was attached to the agenda. So the Thank you for that reminder. The budget meetings, so those are our budget meetings, council budget meetings, but 
Um, we also want to make it clear that on March 10th is the public hearing on the budget. So, uh, and I know that a lot of information will go out into the community. There'll probably be the text, text alert and um, all the other tools that we use to get that information out there, the updates that yeah, go out. It will be featured in the e-blast that goes out at the end of this month. And we will talk about it incessantly at this table, <laughs> March 10th. Yeah, Thursday, 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 7 o'clock. Yes. High school the manager, auditorium. Uh, the managers. Uh, no, the lecture hall. Oh, I mean the lecture hall. Yeah, what you said. Um, the lecture hall at the at the high school. And we will give another reminder about that at our, our next meeting as well. Um, but that is an opportunity for the entire public to be present, to hear the presentation from the town manager, hear the presentation from the superintendent of schools, and ask questions. And it will be on the school school's <coughs> presentation and new uh, cable and YouTube channel. So there'll be lots of ways to watch it, and we'll make sure that that's that's a good job. Anything else before we move on? Thank you, Matthew. Yes. Cobra. Um, we did get a response from uh, Willematic Waste for trash. Um, the tonnage fee was less than we anticipated, and recycling was incredibly complicated. <laughs> so we need to evaluate the recycling because there's a variable rate, uh, and some of the upper ends of the variable rates are scary. So uh, we have not had time to really evaluate it. But um, the partial good news is the tonnage was less than we thought it was going to be. Uh, but uh, so we'll we'll get that out. But we just uh, it just came in, and we've been overwhelmed with budget, and a lot of things have had to kind of be set aside. But we need to come up with it now for budget uh, to to uh, get the appendix of the budget done. But. Uh, this week, I'm going to have to ask you bear with us. Uh, we are stressed to the max and getting the budget done by next Monday. So some things are just going to have to wait. Any questions about COVID? Uh, how about, did you want to well, talk about? Okay. One last thing on, on, on COBRA, because it's related to it. The transfer uh, station uh, is still beyond what I feel comfortable with, and that's even asking for additional money uh, from ARPA. Um, Todd and I are gonna try to fit some time in to talk about the possibility of doing design build. Uh, that would save us uh, the cost of doing detailed plans and specs. We have a, a kind of a, a concept plan that we can share of what it would look like. But to do design build, we would probably, and again, Todd and I have to talk about it, try to get proposals from a couple firms to say, here's the concept plan, what we do. Uh, that's how we did the public works garage and the firehouse. Um, so um, it just, you get some value engineering for people in the field that can say, versus the engineers who, who design things but not necessarily build things. Uh, so um, I I need to find some time to try to, to keep that moving, but um, still, in the meantime, we're getting uh, proceeding ahead to get some wetlands uh, uh, authorization to clear a lot, to clear the land, so that, that what we do, we can get the land cleared cheaper than a contractor may be able to. So we're we're, we're trying to get a buildable site kind of ready. Uh, are, there, are there builders who are experienced in doing transfer stations? Uh, yeah, actually, Earth Dynamics, uh, Jimmy Gailey, uh, Jim Gailey, I felt the one that we have. Uh, he, I think he was working with Desiato at that point. Career, but uh, it was designed by Fuss and Neal, uh, who, who we ended up going over to Fuss and Neal Design Build. Uh, so uh, that's one that I know of, but uh, there are others that we can get actually through Anchor Engineering. Uh, well, you name. You name. <laughs> uh, Barton and the Judas. Uh, Anchor was so easier. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, but they've, they've uh, put some bids out for some other firms so we can go to those firms that have, that have actually constructed them um, to, to see. Uh, sometimes, you know, in the trades you learn some ways to do things cheaper, uh, but not necessarily lesser quality. So um, I want to just throw that out to you. Uh, ultimately, um, you know, you'll, you'll have to, I think you could speed the process up, but I, 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 I just have found that it has worked well, but ultimately that's going to be your decision because we're 
straying from the just a bottom line bit. Well, we certainly had good results from that process with our public works and project and our fire station. So mm -hmm. please so let us know how that progresses. We want to. Todd and I need to talk through that with Bill Watkins and the three of us can, can figure out a process and uh, make sure there's competition uh, for it. And, you know, that means some type of review committee and uh, you know, we can talk about who will be on that. Thank you. Any questions for John? Well, you want to talk about your project update? Sure. Um, you heard to talk about the 350 trails grant. We're really excited about that. Today we got a $25,000 lake grant uh, to continue the hydrilla uh, treatment. Um, we're out to bid on phase one for Orchard Hills housing, uh, which is basically generators to the water system. They broke it into two bids um, so that you get a specialized generator company versus a general contractor that will go hire one of these in mm -hmm. Arco. Um, they received a modification from the Department of Housing. Um, this process for this grant has taken a long time to get the paperwork through the state. Uh, they lost lost it for about six months, even though we kept calling. Um, so uh, in, in that six months, so it's, this is actually a fortunate story, some of their waste piping, cast iron waste pipes out of the units started collapsing. Um, and it can be slip aligned. Um, um, so they went community consulting and, uh, and uh, uh, Orchard Hills Board. I went back to the Department of Housing and they're going to allow us to substitute that for parking lot improvements. Uh, they were going to redo the parking lot and, and that's, that is more critical and it's very expensive to go through and do that for all the units, uh, at least one phase of the units. Um, so now they're going to be modifying the bids to include that slip lining and getting the rest of it out of the bid real soon. So, um, solving an immediate urgency uh, condition with that, that uh, one and a half million dollar grant. Uh, the landfill um, methane um, project was put out to bid. Uh, they reviewed the low bidder, uh, Sunset Valley is uh, the low bidder, and uh, we'll proceed ahead. There's one Area they still want to discuss, making sure they understand uh, an area that uh, will be a recreational field, a softball field. Make sure they have our field quantities, calculations, just a verification of that. Uh, but uh, we should be awarding that bid relatively soon for uh, you know, when the weather breaks uh, start uh, for the methane project. Um, but that, we can't do that until that's on the ARPA list. So some things on that list we're going to have to start making decisions on. Um, 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 mentioned the Yukon um, um, School Engineering gave uh, units for both uh, Robertson and um, CGS. Uh, the School of Nursing is also making over 100 of them, and those will be coming in March. So uh, we're really excited about them. Schools when we picked them up using our trailers, uh, collaboration between the schools. And the John, so, can I ask who paid for the materials? They did. Yukon. Uh, they got some grant foundations. Okay. Uh, some, but uh, they assembled them, and uh, I can tell you, and there'll be some pictures coming out. Um, the engineering students like drew little pictures on them and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> I have they, they made them very <laughs> personal, and they were just beaming that they could be part of a solution to this. And uh, so the, the the people who are running this project, it's again school of nursing and and the engineer departments teaming up uh, together on this. We're just so excited about that the, the engineers can say, "I'm making a personal, uh, I'm personalizing something to make a difference in these." people's lives. Uh, so this is really exciting. Uh, they reached out to us probably because we were talking about HVAC uh, and school year uh, things. Uh, so I'm just really happy when you talk about something, uh, things happen. Yeah, I knew we hadn't paid for it, but I wasn't sure if they had right, received grants or fundraised, but I, it's just fabulous what they did. It really is a breath of fresh air. I agree. It is. You're a real fan. <laughs> I'm a big fan of this program. <laughs> Someone please filter what he's saying. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. 
Don't I make me plug. bang my gavel. Uh -oh. <laughs> Here it comes. Um, all right. Uh, I want to remind people that our consultant for the affordable housing um, uh, has a website up for a survey going on. We'll keep reminding people to do that. Uh, today we got notified. Um, there's a statewide goal of that 10 percent of your housing be affordable. At one point we were about eight and a half percent. We've dropped down below five percent. Every new house that we buy, every new house that's built, changes the ratios. And I don't think people understand what affordable housing is. And, and through this process of this required state mandated plan uh, that we have to fulfill um, by June, and they give us money to pay for it, um, I think we'll, we'll be able to educate people what affordable or attainable housing is. Um, so. I thought that the report that was that had you know, like introductory information did a really good job of explaining what it is and also of talking about Coventry specifically, what the goals are for, you know, we talk a lot about our children being able to stay in this community and afford our volunteer community. firefighters. Our okay. volunteer firefighters can't yeah. stay here. So I thought that 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 was really well well written. That was done by the consultants. Yeah, uh, but again, I think I think the wording ha wording has emotion tied to it, mm -hmm. uh, and that's you know we're not going to be changing the character of the town. We may be improving the vitality of the town. So. Um, through this process, which which is a good that we're going to go through this process, I think people who choose to become educated will understand more. Um, so, I uh, just wanted to do that. Uh, tomorrow, the Library Building Committee is uh, proposing to uh, authorize the project to go out to bid. They are charged to do that under the council's charge. Um, and uh, the softball fields are following soon uh, and um, that's it. Unless there's questions on my report. Julie. Um, talking about like the new potential transfer station, the softball fields, can we see these concept plans or they're just like what we saw? Has anything uh, I don't think I've seen any transfers. Yeah. In the CIP. Uh, it's actually, yeah, I think it's in the CIP document. It is. The actual plan? The concept plan for it. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's why it's this thick. thick. <laughs> well, this much of the yeah. package yeah. is planned. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it has Miller Richardson thoughts, it has yeah. the so, road stuff. Um, but if you can't find it, just drop a <laughs> note and I'll email it to you. All right. And then. Um, Talk about our new building official. Is like his contract on our intranet stuff or anything? Or? Uh, he's a union member. Okay. So he's just part of the, the supervisor's union. Uh, I just didn't remember hearing. I knew you, you came to us and you shared his resume. I just didn't know any of the details of how different he is from our current one. Uh, I certainly could send his uh, resume around. You did. You okay. did. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. talked about that. So in terms of the only thing that's negotiable is the starting bank. And he's making less than our last one. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. As we approach budget time, I just want to call um, With the budget, Amanda will be preparing a employee by employee Excel spreadsheet that we hand out to you. It's not included in the budget document, but we always try to remember to get that to you. Uh, she has it and we'll continue to do that. The email box, the one along with the paper copy, actually. Yeah. Okay. You, you email that's how? She hasn't yet. But she will. Oh, you will email. Okay, I was going to say, I don't think I saw it. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Any other questions for John? The wind the person. Yeah, the the wind oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just sucked it open. The so friendly right. ghost. Okay. And they will do both doors at one time. <laughs> Where are the door stops when that happens all spring? I just want to like. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, all here. It only happens when it's unlocked. 
If the lights go out, that's another. Thing. Yeah, that's another. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you want to say anything about? I know that later on we're talking about policy, but is there anything you want to say about uh, a COVID update? Uh, it can wait till that. Okay. And I did send out to everybody today a communication from Rob Miller, who's the health district director, just so that you can have that. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked a couple of times about the fabulous grant we got, the Trails Grant from Deep. Is there anything more that you want to say about that, or we're good? Yeah, I mean, we have about two years to do it, and, uh, and our match, the grant is actually labor, so we're going to go in there with our equipment and kind of open up these old roads. Fantastic. Excellent job once again on the grant writing. Yeah, so Todd, Todd Penny will probably do the design for it. There's a Rufus Brook crossing, which is a culvert, and that's where a lot of money will go. Mm. Originally, we thought that we were going to have to reduce our request for this grant. This we the we, did, one, right? we yeah. did. This is the reduced grant. Okay. Uh, and, you know, the, so there's not going to be as much kind of process. It's going to be more grading it up, grubbing it, and grading not a lot of, you know, process material down. Uh, that's one of the areas we had to cut some signage and some other things that you know we had to we had to get it down to get get there when you look at how how much money they had statewide and, and it's like three million and we got three hundred fifty thousand that's, that's significant pretty good um so signage is that the kind of thing that could be um uh, a tech ed project or a scout project or is it something other than that Typically of? now we, we try to use non wood yeah. <laughs> that just rot they rot out pretty quickly. Um, stickers that get peeled off. So um, those things can be added over time. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're going to move on to six F four, which is Connecticut Conference of Municipalities State Legislative Program. Uh, I know I've shared some thoughts with John about things that. I think are important that cost and CCM have put forward, but each of you, of course, can do the same thing. Um, if there's something that you want to raise now that's in the CCM priorities, you um, could certainly do that. And then, you know, John will watch for them in those daily alerts. Julie? Just a question. Um, under taxes and finance, John, there's a number three review the current PA 490 program and ensure that it meets its original goals and that municipalities are adequately compensated for lands within the program. Do you expect something here to change or do you hope for something here to change? We're hoping. I think, I think uh, some members may know uh, that a number of years ago we lost a lawsuit uh, on Public Act 490. Um, a developer got a subdivision approved um, and paved the roads but kept all the lots in Public Act 490. Uh, so he's paying the, you know, kind of like uh, taxes on the $2,000 value. Uh, he was selling them for over 100,000. And that wasn't fair. And the judge decided it was, and that judge is no longer there <laughs> for <laughs> those reasons. Um, so the, one of the things we're trying to do is, is basically say once once the, the plants are filed and you can sell it as a subdivision and those are legal lots, then the value changes. Um, and that seemed fair and equitable. And then it, that's the way almost, that's the way, as far as I know, every other developer has done it, uh, except for this one. Um, so that, that's one of the issues, but also they're not fully funding uh, public <coughs> act for um, so, the state of Connecticut? Yeah. They're not really funding the amount that they're supposed to statutorily fund. There's always a not to exceed amount and they spread the money out. So um, there's been there's been a lot of concern that 490 has strayed from its original intent. And, and um, I don't think it's really going to go anywhere in a short session, quite frankly. Uh, but we are trying to look at um, long term of that to us. I don't think people realize how many acres in our town are 490. Um, we lose a lot of taxable income. On the other hand, it's space that's not developed. So there's, there's a balance. Um, um, so you don't want to 
ruin it uh, by making big open space in farmland so expensive to hold that people have no choice but to sell it. And that's one of the reasons for that. For Act, uh, Public Act 490 uh, has worked during town. We have a lot of people with big old farmlands that are just holding on to it. That, that, that old Yankee farmer that's the land is valu valuable for them and they prefer not to, but if they had to pay taxes as buildable land, uh, they wouldn't be able to. So the program works really well, uh, but there's some abuses that need to maybe, maybe be looked at. So, can I take it one step further? Where in our budget would I see to know that the state is funding us or not funding us or if it's changed from last year to this year? Um, well, uh, it, if you wouldn't see it visibly in the budget because it is incorporated into the assessment of each property. So when the tax bills are billed, it's incorporated into their billing. That would have to be a separate report, and I can have the assessor run that for you so you can see the past few years. I appreciate that. So you send a bill to the state of Connecticut. You say Joe Schmo has this land in 490. He owes us a thousand bucks. The state owes us nine thousand bucks. Yeah, well, it doesn't seem to be really going to happen. Please, or whatever. <laughs> That's a yeah. good question. Yeah. Uh, my memory, and sometimes it's wrong, my memory says that almost 40% of our town is in 490. Mm -hmm. Really? Well, I mean, it, it's... Well, open space, forest. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it depends on but, the but program. Farm and forest. Yeah. Um, but Not all open then there's Voluntown where it's over 93%. <laughs> but it would be interesting to know what we should be getting reimbursed, what we're not getting reimbursed, which then allows us to advocate okay. for ourselves. It, it sounds like a pilot program that I always complained about in Wyndham. Same, same because way. all the state property exactly. that was in Wyndham, Eastern, mm -hmm. the courthouses, I mean, and pilot was based on the same like you said. They put a pool of money in and you get whatever the percentage is. You don't get anywhere near close to what they should pay you. They're doing a little better over the last two years on pilot for the cities. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, they have now something called the tiered pilot, and, and the top tier needy communities get more. Uh, but anyway. Any other? Julie. Uh, obviously, I'm always in favor of increasing the thresholds for prevailing wage, and that's listed under municipal labor relations. Got to keep asking for it. We 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 did as as municipalities get the um, new construction increased. We were unable to get the renovations increased, and and that's the that's been our goal for the last couple of years to just basically say, listen, you can't renovate anything. And sometimes the pay for a small business person, the small the paperwork for prevailing wage is just so overwhelming. They got to hire somebody. Yeah just to do the paperwork so it's it's um, so renovations is a good goal to try to get that to a higher level so that you don't have to go through this burden yeah, it's not just a financial burden it's a, it's a real work burden um, so there there may be hope but um it's an election here you do that, right? or yeah, do yeah. I mean, that's a standing. Um, you know, if they'll they'll pick some people out and ask them to testify uh, when that bill comes up. Um, I usually get called on broadband bills, um, um, assessment bills, sometimes 490. Um, but it's, the, um, you try to have different faces depending on the, the issue. I spent an hour today with. Uh, um, chair of uh, the Energy Technology Committee, an uh, informal discussion, which is more valuable than testimony. Uh, so Senator Mealman gave uh, three class members an hour of time, which is very valuable to talk through some, some issues on solar and uh, the virtual net metering, which but um, um, broadband uh, issues. So. You, the municipalities try to pick target areas. Yeah. 
for the last few years I've been pigeonholed into solar and broadband more than other fiscals. I was into property tax uh, issues. And, so they call on who they need to. And no watch for alerts around those? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Let's move on to unfinished business. We have a motion <coughs> on the um, draft version for amended town personnel rules per OSHA COVID requirements. Uh, motion to maybe send it to steering. Is that or you want to go back there? Council, would you, you want this to go back to, to steering, steering first? Steering. We have a motion Second. to send stairs to steering by John Hand, seconded by John French. Any discussion? The only reason is there's a few things that are still becoming clear mm -hmm. that I think we want to talk about a little bit in more depth. Okay. So I just as a point of information, the policy unmodified is in effect. Um, we stayed certain things in it, like uh, requiring <coughs> uh, mandatory vaccination, requiring uh, a lot of the testing requirements that were in the OSHA breaks that were shot down. We didn't well. require mandatory vaccinations. Yeah. We did require employees to report their vaccination status. So in the event we would like to start a testing program, we can, we don't have to, but we are requiring employees to at least let us know their status as of now. And the hires are required to report it as they are on board. So there's just, I don't think I think we need to talk a little bit more in depth because it's a really a significant policy for mm -hmm. uh, the relationship between um, management and employees. All those in favor of the motion on the table, please say. I just have oh, a really quick question. As I read it, and Steer, please ask when you're there. There's a paragraph about confidentiality and privacy. So, like here, we're like. We want to know if you're vaccinated. You got to tell us when you're vaccinated. Tell us what you know you got. And then there's a whole paragraph about privacy and confidentiality. Well, that it's going to be treated in accordance with applicable laws and policies. Have those changed or been updated? With because this COVID seems like HIPAA and any privacy is just yeah. So <laughs> you're yeah. not allowed to release any individually identifiable information. I'm allowed to release. We have. X percentage vaccinated, X percentage not vaccinated, but I am not allowed to release anything more than that to the public. My office has been the ones collecting that information, and it is confidential at this point. We're not allowed to share that with department heads or share that with individual public. That is a percentage based if you request the information, but on an individual basis, we cannot share that. It definitely would be under HIPAA, wouldn't it? Well, no, HIPAA, HIPAA is over, over exaggerated. HIPAA has to do with the Health Insurance Privacy Protection Act. COVID is not really an insurable event yet. It will start moving into vaccinations, but when the, the people are getting vaccinated, I mean, if you go to the, to the doctor, then it becomes an, a HIPAA event. But if we're talking about just are you vaccinated or not right now, it's not insured. You're getting, getting those free. Uh, that may change, but so, just the general statement that HIPAA is over exaggerated for everything. It's really related to insurance information, uh, uh, information on insurance on your medical status. Um, so it's just overstated. Um, but right now, we, we, under our policy, that information only goes to the finance office and, and, and nowhere else. Thank you. But, you virtually can say, you know, we know that you're not vaccinated, so you can't eat lunch with somebody. I mean, so, you know, some of the impacts are going to be evident. We are allowed to require vaccinations, technically. We yeah. have not moved towards that. I don't necessarily recommend that, but we are allowed to require it. We are definitely allowed to require at least for a status update. I don't know if these are the <coughs> That's just as an employer. Right? As an employer. As most employers have that. It's within their purview to make up their own set of rules that are required for employment. So 
So we were employee handbook, and then it's part of the agreement. And that's why we were following based on the OSHA saying this, so we're going to piggyback on OSHA. Yeah. Now, OSHA is not saying that, so we need to, that's why I think we need to talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. uh, where we are, especially if the numbers are going down. Thank goodness, hopefully it'll stay down. Um, but it has broader ramifications uh, that we need to think, think through and talk through uh, versus just say, oh, the manager said, here's a draft. We'll say yes. I want to make sure we talk through that. So we have a motion on the table. All those to um, have this reviewed by steering. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That was unanimous on that motion. Can we have a motion to adopt the revised job description for the position of cemetery sector? So moved. Second. Moved by John Hand, seconded by Marty. Um, I just want to thank the Cemetery Commission for going back into this document, um, getting in the language that they felt was appropriate to the work that the Sexton will be doing. Um, they're not, they're, they're an oft, often little recognized committee that has some really serious and challenging work to do. Uh, any other discussion on this job description? Julie? Listening to you, I'm sitting here before you started this to say that this group and these people have come a long way and done immeasurable good things for us. And I really do appreciate it. They really have. Mm -hmm. um, it's a labor of love, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's please, really please know that I am holding lots of puns back because of that. The Thank grave, you. Grave <laughs> Thank you. That. I don't have any grave concerns. I appreciate you exercising that self-control. <laughs> You're holding a lot. There is a motion on the table to approve the job description for our cemetery sexton. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That was unanimous. Next on our agenda is item 7C. Can we have a motion to approve the Board of Education's request for adjustment to the reserve fund policy to allow up to 2%? Um, so moved. Second. Moved by Marty Milkovic, seconded by John Hand. Discussion on this motion, please. Anybody want to present anything? Robin, you want to talk about it? Sure, I'm happy to talk about it. So it was something that was discussed during the last finance committee meeting. And um, one of the things, well, there are a couple points that were discussed. The first point that was discussed, or one of the points I focused on that was discussed, is the fact that the Board of Education, unlike the town council, does not have funds that it can carry over from year to year outside of what was the 1% fund with the town the 2% fund. Um, and when you're operating um, and budgeting for a large town entity and you budget conservatively, things can change throughout the year. That means that um, there's just naturally money left over at the end of the year. We had discussed this on the town side because that is how we increase our fund balance rather than budget money for the fund balance. Instead, we rely on the fact that we have conservative budgeting to ensure that hopefully there's money left over for the fund balance at the end of the year. That's how we grow that fund balance. The Board of Education similarly goes through the same sort of um, conservative budgeting to make sure that they have enough funds to cover their operations throughout the year so that they're not coming back to the town council. What that means is that sometimes at the end of the year, they have some money left over. Uh, increasing this from the 1% to, to 2% would um, improve their ability to do things like, for example, tackle projects at the end of the year, which is when they may realize they have this money, over the summer that will not be completed within the fiscal year. So they can start a project in, for example, May, that carries over into July or August. Um, another, um, another thing that we discussed was the fact that historically what this fund has been used for are items, and what it has to be used for are items that are on the capital plan. What that does for the town in terms of the town's budgeting is it means that they address it and we don't have to carry it over into the next year's capital plan. Um, 
traditionally, I am unaware of no challenges to whether or not what they've done with the money is appropriate, and I actually believe they need to get approval to use the funding. Um, so I, I don't I think there are concerns from that perspective, that everything they do with the money is appropriate. Um, additionally, you know, the change from 1% to 2% is consistent with state statute. Um, I think these are the main points that we talked about in finance before the finance. Oh, uh, Amanda, hope <laughs> to be recognized. So I have to step up for one second. I just wanted to also mention that based on the policy that Coventry has devised, the Board of Ed requests the Town Council approve the transfer of funds at the end of the year. They cannot just transfer whatever they feel like. They request that the Council approve their transfer. So the Council still has control over how much gets transferred into that fund each year, which I think is important to know. We still have full control over everything. Great, thank you. Right. So that was another point that was discussed, and I think that that is an important point as well, the fact that as the Town Council, we retain that ability to approve um, uses of those funds so for all of those reasons, what we just discussed, the Finance Committee had voted um, at a vote of two days to, to one day to recommend to the Town Council that we approve the Board of Education's request to revise the MOA to reflect 2% as opposed to 1%. And that's what I wanted to say on that in the first instance. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Mark. I, I, you mentioned in your what you just spoke, but I, maybe it should be clarified that this is um, on, in the state statute. The legislature, at some point in the past, voted that boards of education could do this. And then I think a few years ago, originally it was 1%, and a few years ago they voted to raise it to 2%, effective either last year or this year. I don't recall. John Friend. Yeah, I think that's a Okay, for one, even it's in the state statute, it's elected upon the town council or the board of finance or whatever form of government you want to whether or not to implement it. Wyndham itself did not implement it. They felt it was more important to have the money come back to the uh, rainy day fund, fund balance of the town, and if there was an emergency, then the board of ed would come to them. With the board of ed funding, as you should know, uh, the big wild card has always been special ed. Special ed can go any, if you have one, one child come in, it could cost you anywhere between a hundred to half a million dollars, depending on what the problem is. As long as the town council is aware of that, if there a problem comes up and there's a shortfall at the Board of Ed, then the Board of Ed comes to us, and that's why we have the rainy day fund. So they ask us for it, they show the need for it, and then it could be done through us. Uh, we had special, <coughs> the, uh, the state of Connecticut actually had a uh, Dr. Uh, Stephen Adamowski work with Wyndham for two years. He was special counsel from the uh, State Board of Education. He made it very clear that the function of the board, of ed, uh, the, uh, the board, or the or the uh, education department was to educate the children, not to make money, not to house money. He said basically, your idea, other than special funds outside your realm. You get money going in at the beginning of the year, you have zero at the end of the year. A couple of questions I would like for the Board of Education to see whether or not this is something that is doable is my first question to the Board of Ed is that I understand they have a um, tuition fund. Well, I, I had to, uh, we had out of town students come in to win that I had to take care of. We had 30 students from Columbia. So when you say you had to take care of, were you on the Board of Education? I was also on the Board of Ed. Just, I, just I was wanted, actually, I just wanted I was, to clarify. I was the chairman of the Board of Education as well. And when was that? That was th uh, just before I moved here up through 17. So it was fairly recent. Um, so the job of the school is to educate. A lot of questions come up about the building and maintaining the building. Well, in the state statutes. The, the buildings of the school are owned by the town. Technically, the education, the Board of Education leases the facilities from the town. So we are technically owners of the facility. The Board of Ed is there just to, once again, educate students. I have a real problem with going from one to 2%. You're looking at 1% uh, was $283,000.
I think there was at only one point they ever really got up that close on transferring the funds. But you're talking, giving them the availability of going over half a million dollars. <coughs> oh, and I'm sorry, I want to go back to where I was going with uh, tuition. From what I understand, to what we had to do with tuition, which was 600000 was to offset the cost of education. Here in Coventry, tuition isn't used to offset the cost of education. I'm not sure where that one goes. So that's one question I have for the Board of Ed when we meet with them. Um, there, there's a couple of other issues like that, and that's why I would ask this board, because I have other questions, that we could postpone this vote. We are meeting with the Board of Ed on 314, and then after we get the presentation of the Board of Ed and be able to ask them questions, by all means, could we process and look at the 1 to 2%. That was the reason I was asking earlier. Um, we, uh, unfortunately, there was a problem here, not getting minutes back, there wasn't any understanding, we didn't know what kind of questions were asked, uh, just like what mentioned of things that I brought up to the table tonight. So I, I'm very uncomfortable with definitely going to 2%, 1% is a question. It, it was stated even in the uh, superintendent's letter, in case an emergency crops up. Well, the emergency is they can only spend the money on what has been approved in capital. The capital project is five years long. So if they want to pick and choose, they could call it an emergency and, and do something in the capital plan without even coming to us because the capital plan gets voted on at the end of every year with the budget. So you don't have as much control as you really probably think you have. So that's why I think it's still, we had, we had set the goals at the beginning of the year that we wanted to build a 15%, but at the same time that we're saying we wanted to build a 15% fund up. Or, or get the fund balance up to 15%. We're also saying that we may give up another quarter of a million dollars to the Board of Ed. So I, I don't see that as, at this point I'm not convinced, and I would like to ask more questions of the Board of Ed when they come to see us. That's, I'm set. Thank you. Anybody have any other comments? Julie. I want to say that I oppose this and I'm going to tell you that I oppose it because I have always wanted to have a better relationship and work better with the Board of Education. And I feel like this almost divides us. We have one <coughs> budget that the town votes on. This budget is for the whole town of Coventry. So that at the end of the year, if the town side is conservative and there's money left over goes to the fund balance. If the Board of Ed is conservative and handles their money well, then it should come back to our fund balance. We should work together as a group. They don't need their little, and they come, the MOA is that they're gonna come and ask us, can we do this? Well, why not just work together? And it is one budget, we're one group of people, one town. And I, I do, I agree that we should take care of the buildings and the properties the, the facilities, they belong to the town, the roads, the buildings, all these facilities are the town of Coventry. The board of Ed can focus on educating them. Any other thoughts or comments? Um, I have just Marty? a question. We would approve any expenditures under this fund, is that true? Correct. As a matter of fact, you know, what I was going to do is, um, because this is not attached to the agenda, I'm just going to read, um, so John, French, Councilor French had asked for answers to some questions. So I'm just gonna read that out loud so that the public can hear. <clears throat> so the first question is, what's the, uh, what is the highest amount that the reserve fund for the, for the Board of Ed can have now? The response from our finance director is, the statute does not limit the total the fund can have. Coventry's policy limits the fund to not exceed 3% of the amount appropriate to the Board of Ed in the most recently ended fiscal year. So when this policy was developed by this town council, well, I don't remember how many years ago at this point, um, that council chose to build in additional safeguards and additional controls. Um, the second question was, what's the amount <coughs> with, with the BOE projected budget? The BOE's current budget is $28,305,819. 2% of this is $566,116, which would be the maximum amount that could be transferred. 
However, all transfers into this fund are approved by the town council, that, so the council still holds control of how much goes in. So um, I heard your comment, Councilor French, about the Board of Ed could put in half a million dollars, but they can only do that if the council approves that. So if the council says, no, you know, no, um, you can put in $100,000 and the rest needs to come back to the general fund, the council has, again, we have that built in there. Um, the third question was, what is the most that account has had since its inception? The answer is the highest year-end balance was at the end of fiscal year 20 at 305228 In total since the fund inception, a total of 515000 has been transferred into this fund. That doesn't mean that's what's there now. Each year um, has ranged from zero, so there have been years where they put nothing into the fund, to $150,000. The fourth question is, what can this account be used for? The town policy clearly outlines they may be used for capital items that are in the six-year capital improvement plan. Emergency items and other non-curring pur purchases must be made with approval by the council. So again, another safeguard was put in. Um, and then question five is really a duplicate of other questions. So I just want to make it clear that when this policy was developed, and I was part of that council, and Julie might have been too, um, we talked about it at length um, and really worked very carefully on it um, to make sure that as crafted, it had ceilings built in and that all control remained with the council. But we recognized um, what, what Robin mentioned earlier that sometimes there are emergencies that come up that need to be dealt with quickly or there are projects that need to be taken care of outside of the budget year or um, that the Board of Ed can then pursue. And what we have found in the year since is that they've res very responsibly taken care of some of the projects that then get pulled out of the capital project for the ne capital plan for the next year. I, I think whether it's spent from this non-reoccurring fund that they have, or whether it's spent from the general fund, it's still an expenditure that has been approved in a capital plan, um, and at some point it's gonna have to be paid for. Um, it's, it's, it's the same dollars, um, whether they're coming out of a general fund or, or a non-recurring fund. John Hill. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, in here, in, in this, this letter that you just shared, whatever, it does point out about the 3% uh, cap, essentially. That's a, the Coventry's policy on that, right? right? And it, it's my understanding, no, nobody's uh, suggesting that cap be moved in any direction, correct? That'll still correct. be the same limit it was before, right? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure that was very clear as well. It seems like the guide rails are still in place. In fact, it's the same guide rail we've had for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's important. Uh, I just wanted to, for, for perspective, and in particular, I mean, we're about to hear from John regarding this year's capital improvement plan, and we talked about this during finance in the context of shifting some capital expenditures into ARPA, because the capital plan is already very much stretched um, as far as we can responsibly make it, and there are tough decisions made and tough priorities that, that need to be accounted for and I think that limiting the ability of the Board of Education to perhaps remove some of that from, the, from our plates, from the capital improvement plan going forward um, with any funding that they may have, um, you know, reap throughout the year, whether it's an additional grant that they were able to realize during the middle of the year, whether it was, um, as Councilman French mentioned, um, a change in special education needs, whether it's just that a lot of teachers took maternity leave and money was saved on that, and you know, whatever the reason, to the extent that there's money left over at the end and it can be used to relieve some of the pressure on the capital um, improvement plan list going forward, I think we should encourage that. I also think that by allowing them to save up to 2%, we reward, in some ways, fiscal responsibility and um, going after these grants, right? So we incentivize their desire to go after grants that'll bring in additional money. I'm sure
sure they would want to anyway, but allowing them to know that this is money that at the end of the year they could use to, uh, to offset some of their capital plans and priorities is just one additional way to incentivize them to behave in a manner that is um, fully conscientious of town funds. So that was that was my other thought too, is just that the incentives there align appropriately, I think. Anybody else? Sure. So Lisa and Madam Chair said that it's the council's decision and that brings me around to the Board of Ed Chair's statement and the minutes that she just thinks this is the time when the council will be favorable to increasing this. Okay, so then that scares the heck out of me that no matter what they ask for, you guys have the numbers, they're going to get it or whatever. I, I just think that we should work together. There doesn't have to be a divide. It's not us versus them, and it never has been. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you. Robin? I, I do just want to um, address that point really quickly, Councilwoman Blanchard, which is that you know I was very interested to see what the budget request would come in at, whether the Board of Education would think you know, oh, it's, it's a democratically controlled town council, we're going to have a drastic operating budget request increase. And we didn't see that. I think that their operating budget increase um, was pretty modest, all things considered. So uh, I think that the indication is that they're not attempting to take advantage of the taxpayers or the town council or, or anything like that. Um, I recognize where that language could be could be read in a way that, that might be worrisome to some, but I don't think their actual actions up through now have indicated a desire to take advantage one way or the other. I think they're doing the same thing they've always done, which is an attempt to be fiscally responsible. Mark. Uh, can I ask uh, Amanda, what what types of items have they used this uh, these funds for in the past? So um, I would say about half of them have been items that were approved in the six-year capital plan, which is already approved in the policy, and the other half have been for emergency repairs to HVAC units, boilers, air conditioners, and they are allowed to request those retroactively. Again, the council has the right to say no, find it in your operating budget to cover it, and we've not done that. They've all been reasonable building facility repairs that are necessary and required to do immediately. They've never been and probably the total spent, I can't recall if that was in the letter, the total spent was about how much over how many years? So if the, the map, uh, if 515 have been transferred, there's about 123 left. So a little less than $400,000 since 2014. So eight years. So eight years, okay. And, that, and also just to your point, Julie, and what and Robin, what Robin said about whoever has majority on the council. Um, again, this is a working together, and um, no matter who's been in the majority on the council, the Board of Ed's request to use this fund, they, it's been approved in recognition of what that provides for us moving forward. Um, so it really, that hasn't, it hasn't been a partisan issue. issue. Um, the use of those funds. There's never been, been a, de a request denied. Um, there was one or two years where they waited to approve the amount transferred into the fund just to see where the Board of Ed was ending their year, but there has never been a request denied as of today. Nor do I think the town council would ever deny a request to replace a freezer in the cafeteria or to do something that's necessary for our town. That's <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I would want to do that. Agreed. And it seems like the control would still rest with the council to approve oh, yeah, those yeah. things. So there's no giving up of any control over them. All those expenditures have to come through this council, by the body, this body. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's important. Like we're, retaining the, we're retaining the oversight, the approvals. The cap of the 3% is still in place, and that's, there's no suggestion of changing that. And again, the decision still happens here. Okay, and the history on that is excellent. Thanks, Marty, for asking that. Thanks, Amanda, for providing that. The history on the usage of this and the funding of this and the requests and the approvals in a bipartisan world that 
sounds like this is um, working. Right, so we have a motion on the table to approve the Board of Ed's request um, to increase the reserve fund um, from 1% to 2%. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. Mm -hmm. So that was um, five in favor and two opposed. So the motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Um, can we have a motion to approve the recommended awards, um, culture and grants funding awards under the ARPA funding? So moved. Second. This was um, so moved by oh, sorry, John, by John Second. Hand, seconded by Marty Milkovic, correct? Yep. Um, and this is a fund that was set up, uh, or this was a decision made by the prior council to provide some support for um, folks in the community who are involved in the arts and cultural um, efforts and activities to, to provide some support for that. And this is our first round of uh, people who apply for funds. You can see the list there. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this? Robin? So I will um, comment just that Again, and I said it in my report that I'm really excited about all of the stuff and all of the requests. And I will note, as I've noted this in the past, that Christmas in the Village is one of my family's favorite events. So I'm excited to see it planned for into the future. Um, we are big fans of that um, and all of, all of the other items as well. And the feet, the mm -hmm. statue feet. <laughs> We want to have Nathan Hale up. Nathan Hale good standing out again. Good, good life to stand on. Any other, oh, no. <laughs> Any other comments, questions, no puns? I, I would just like to point out that these dollar amounts don't cover all of the volunteer hours that come behind all of this work. So uh, this is a pittance when you compare it to all of the person hours that are involved in bringing the arts and culture into our town. Sure. Here, here. And uh, my understanding is there are still a couple of applicants that are being reviewed. So some more might be brought to us. Two more are being looked at. Thank you, Amanda. All those in favor of the motion on the table, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you. Go as fast as we could because now we're going through the capital improvement plan. So, buckle up. Don is going to go through his proposed capital improvement plan. I just want to remind all of us that this is the town manager's proposal. Tonight is for us to understand it, to understand how this plan works, how to look at it. Um, but it will still be up to us to make final decisions about what's in this plan, what's, what doesn't potentially stay in this plan, or what might be adjusted. Um, capital improvement plan is always a daunting. Wait, can I just say one more thing? John has agonized over this, so I just want you all to know that he has literally put sweat, blood, and tears into this along with Amanda. So. Thanks to both of you in advance. I know it wasn't easy. It's an especially difficult year. Um, so we'll go through, but I'm proposing to do some catch up on, on some projects using American uh, Rescue Plan money. So there's a slide on that. Um, so um, the council ultimately decides the full capital improvement plan, uh, what projects can be added, amended uh, or deleted and and I also propose where the money is coming from to to fund these and those are also all in your jurisdiction ultimately the goes through the budget process and unlike other sections of the budget the capital improvement plan is actually voted on by at the town meeting by everybody uh, so what is a capital improvement program I'm not going to read a PowerPoint presentation, but it basically is a tool to establish priorities, time frames, uh, look at the long run, uh, 
having something in the plan in the future makes it more competitive for grants uh, because it shows that you're not just going for something because a grant opportunity came around. You can say, hey, look, this has been in our plan. Uh, and under Connecticut general statutes, the uh, certain parts of the capital improvement plan um, require Connecticut general statutes 8-24 reviews. Uh, so that's generally things that are land use based uh, versus like a dump truck. A dump truck doesn't require an 8-24. So, and did you say that that review is by Planning and Zoning? Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, they have it, uh, and they will be making the decision uh, later this month on that and make recommendations back to you. Uh, so you'll have that while you're going through the budget process. So uh, at least two council members know, um, maybe more, uh, that I've been striving for <laughs> For a long time, to get up to a million dollars of cash uh, on an annual basis, so we got really, we kind of got up there, and then it, then it kind of <coughs> did a little saddle, and then really COVID hit, uh, and the capital budget took a big drop, mostly because the board of ed deleted all their capital projects that year uh, as the way to meet a meet the budget goal. Uh, the town took it out of our operating budget, uh, they took it out of their capital budget. And they were warned that uh, it doesn't come back all in one year, and this year I'm trying to, to start, last year we did some, and we're trying to do a little bit more, uh, and we'll, we'll get into some of those specifically. But you can see where we are in general, in a business sector, a capital improvement, uh, or fund looks at about a 10% of your total budget. That would be more like we would be spending two and a half million to 2.6 million. So we are at a very poor place uh, for the survivability of the town. So we use a different software than admins for this. It's a software called Plan It, uh, which is an access database. Um, and it breaks it down in so many different ways uh, that, uh, and we don't even give you all the different reports but we generally have uh, kind of departments uh, which uh, capital non-recurring expenditure fund culture and recreation education general administration and human services and um, we also then have sources like bonding, cafeteria fund, capital on recurring, uh, cemetery fund, uh, um, grants, uh, land acquisition fund, lease purchasing, all the way to finance these various uh, local low SIP grant, uh, which is from filing fees at the town clerk's office, low SIP grants, which you get about 100,000 a year, miscellaneous highway funds, uh, when we sell off something or somebody takes out a street light or, or, or something like that, uh, money comes in. Uh, recreation fund, sewer fund, um, state federal grants, uh, steep grants, and we try to plan out steep grants uh, over time, assuming that you're not going to get them every year. Um, um, but when it really comes to filing that application, this is, uh, again, one of those that we put it in, so something that's been an issue that we've been looking towards, but ultimately the council decides what we apply for that. And radio tower income, um, we have two um, providers up on our tower here. We get about twenty-five dollars to $27,000 a year for each. Uh, we take off 10000 of that revenue uh, to um, buy rolling stock radios for police, fire, uh, EMS, uh, public works, uh, so that we don't have to carry that in our operating budget. So uh, some of that it goes for work on the tower and some, some is also in the vehicles. Um, so kind of where we are, where we've been, um, general fund this last budget year, um, we're 720. I'm trying to get us back up towards that 900,000. Uh, so I'm proposing a $108,000 increase. Now to put that in perspective, that's 0.1 mil. So it's a big increase. Um, but it's about 
where I propose us to be last year before the council cut uh, money. Uh, Town A for Road, we get about 300,000. It's actually just slightly uh, less than that now. Uh, low SIP, we get about $100,000 a year. Um, we put money in and take money out of the capital non recurring uh, uh, fund. Um, I'm proposing to pull uh, 63500 out of that fund. Uh, and I am not proposing not to put any money back in. And I'm hoping that a year end will be able to do that, but one of the ways I'm reducing some of the budget impact um, is that we're not going to put money into that fund this year. And that's again a council decision. But I had to try to find ways to reduce the impact on the operating budget. So we're not putting money in the general fund to subsidize the capital non recurring fund. Um, long term, we're, there have been a goal to get that capital non recurring fund up to almost a million dollars. Um, over the last few years, at year end, we've been able to put money in. And I think this year we may be able to make some significant contributions into that fund. That's why I pulled this out. Uh, because some of our revenues are higher than it expected this year. Um, so, kind of look at some of these. Um, obviously, we see a, almost a $6 million, that's meaning we're talking about some bonding. So, again, you know, kind of a slow curve up and the dramatic drop down, and then proposing it to start climbing back up. So in the general fund, um, these are operational, um, you know, in, in the money, uh, in the budget uh, that we need to come up with funds for. So typically, uh, we budgeted 300,000 of the local taxes uh, for roads. Uh, you have the road study uh, that shows that that's not adequate. Uh, but I didn't feel we could increase it this year. Uh, um, and that's matched with that Town Acre Road for about 600, which we call our summer road, which is basically the, the chip ceiling and crack ceiling um, type of projects. Network refresh, uh, 64,000. Board of Ed had asked for uh, 75,000. Uh, computer, educational computer upgrades, uh, we were running kind of 100,000-ish a year. This was cut out all together, and I'm trying to get back into funding some, whether we can get that 50,000 this year or not. Uh, but uh, part of what they're looking for is to change from whiteboards to smart boards, uh, more interactive TVs for the classrooms, and they've started that process, and they need some help getting through that. School carpet replacement. Uh, all these have pages in the capital budget you can look at. Um, these got cut at some some point. Um, doing a little bit, and this is actually proposing to do uh, grammar school um, office area, um, which would have been proposed about three or four years ago. Uh, at some point, carpet become tow tow trips and hazards. Uh, um, um, town hall computer upgrades. Uh, this is about our annual cost per year. Um, we need to buy police cars every year. This year we're, we're getting two. One would be a replacement for the, the also a, a police chief car. Uh, the chief's car is our, at that, that point. So kind of a, every third or fourth year we end up having to have two um, uh, cruisers. Uh, but this time it's, it's, a, it's a cruiser and a uh, for the chief. Scott Air Packs, um, we've got bottles uh, that are aging out. They have a certain life on them. Um, the new bottles we're getting actually are going to a 30 year life versus a 15 year life. So Bud has prepared uh, kind of a, a schedule for that. Uh, fire gear, um, just you know the coats and the, the turnout gear. Um, that ages out. Um, it's got OSHA life on it too. Um, so, 25000 and we're going to get into ARPA to look at we're a little behind on where we need to be there because uh, some of those things are cut. Fire hose and equipment, uh, $20,000. Hose and ladder tests, um, you know, you 
have to test them annually and you blow out sections of hose when you put them under high pressure and you have to you know replace them. Um, open space fund we've been down at about 15,000 uh, for the last three or four years. Uh, lake management uh, 90,000 uh, we had anticipated uh, getting some grant money. Um, uh, just got an email today I think we're looking for a little bit more than the 25 uh, so I think typically more 40 we may be able to cut back a little bit and have to check with Amanda on what balance we have we may have some balance left so you know why it's less from us uh, they're getting less federal money um, um, they tend to give us the federal money uh, for the hydrilla because it's a statewide issue um, I'm appreciative of what we got um, because at some point they've been giving us a lot every year um, so I just got that email today and I need to check to see whether this number will still work I think we can make it work and I need to check the balance and as again some of you remember some of that depends what fiscal year falls in and, and mm -hmm. so we have to look at that but um, um, pickup truck replacement um, 50,000 um, and a dump truck body is rotted out that we have to replace the body on. The truck still has life in it. So LOSIP, again, 100% state grant. We spread the money out. A lot of, a lot of this goes into it's our major way to do some park improvements. Um, so we have some Patriots Park improvements that are needed. Uh, some Greaser Park improvements, we, we have a couple more buildings to tear down there. We still have some money, but we basically there's five buildings that are all rotted out that have to go. Um, uh, fire pond maintenance, this was unintentionally, unintentionally cut last year, uh, but uh, we have a couple fire ponds that we need to, to get the pipes repaired and the, and the gauges, the, the covers re replaced. Uh, but since we don't have fire uh, fire hydrants, we need to really have these ponds accessible or we start losing our fire rating for insurance purposes. Guardrails every few years, we, we uh, keep a running list of projects and, and we get a company in to just do guardrail. Um, a lot of our areas, um, um, we actually have some rust, rusted out uh, core 10 steel that is actually failing. Uh, uh, the idea with the Cortent steel was that it would rust, and the rust would create the barrier from it rusting further. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not necessarily always the case, uh, so we actually have some other guardrail that we have to look at. And then some large drainage projects uh, and some subdivision uh, work that we need to do. Uh, this will specifically uh, go to finish up some, some work. We don't have enough money to do a project on uh, School Street. Uh, and onto Main Street uh, to do a crossover pipe and, and put on our list for a while. Other minor funds. Um, so local LOSIP, um, I'm proposing that's money that comes in again from land records. We don't get a lot uh, in, uh, but it can be used for any purpose that LOSIP could be used for. And I'm proposing we built a new pavilion that has no picnic tables. Uh, so I need to get pick tables in there for uh, next year um, and, and a few grills. So that's really what finished that project up, but we only had money to build a pavilion, but now we need to equip the, the, the pavilion. Did you say grills? Grills. Like for cooking? Yeah. The rec department plans on renting that out and off soccer season uh, for, for, and it will become a revenue pr producer for birthday parties and so forth. But you, our parks have grills. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I was just concerned about impact on the fields. I don't know what that like. I don't know what that means in terms of how the fields might be treated or garbage or attracting animals, things like that. No, we have them all through Patriots Park and. Yeah, but those aren't playing fields. Playing fields take a different kind of maintenance. Well, this is going to be up next to the pavilion. It's not going to be on the, play, on the playing fields. And soccer club can use them for their events, too. I mean, they're in the ground, cast iron grills. Parks usually happen. Um, 
cemetery extension uh, coming out of cemetery fund. Uh, they really what they're going to do is they need to keep working on the wall walls of Nathan Hale Cemetery. Um, the walls are along um, Dick Street are kind of the walls are falling. Uh, we already had one section of wall about five years ago fall out and a body followed it. It was not good. Mm -hmm. um, power curber, um, basically self-propelled curber. You dump you know, asphalt in and it comes out with a, a little stream. The one that we have is failing. Um, we do often hire a company to come out, but there's sometimes the jobs are not really large enough to get a competitive price and it's better for us to just do it and backfill it um, but um, more and more the roads that we're replacing are in subdivisions that have curbing and without the curbing the drainage doesn't work curb actually also protects the edge of the asphalt you know if this is the edge of road here you put a curb along here it stops the, the edge of the road from cracking once the if that if you don't have curb the road will start cracking up you see that on your driveway. Um, so, actually, we have proposed thirty-five thousand uh, in Lake Management, so we're, we're close. American Rescue Plan, one point seven million. We'll get to to how that uh, will work out. So, American Rescue Plan, new, that new track software that we talked about, one hundred five thousand. Uh, that would allow a fifty-two thousand dollar cut in the board budget. Um, otherwise, if it's not funded here, we would need to add 52000 in our operating budget. Um, Country High School HVAC. Um, we're planning to do HVAC work this, this summer. We have some money that was uh, in a unit ventilator replacement. We need another $760,000 just to do the high school. That won't touch the middle school. This will not be air conditioning. It's just fresh air ventilation. Uh, and heat. Uh, the systems are what has called a two-pipe two system where in the future if we, if we do add air conditioning, air, air chilling uh, capabilities, a valve can be turned and chilled water goes through the unit ventilators uh, and you have in effect um, air conditioning. It takes some of the humidity out at the same time. Uh, so that's not part of this. This is just to replace unit ventilators. Um, at the high school, um, and even though the unit ventilators at, at the middle school are older, this is part of the, the roof replacement, where the roof replacement part will be bringing through the roof uh, um, fresh air uh, intake. Um, so I, I prefer not to leave those unconnected for too long. Um, Part of our interoperability um, and, and backup, uh, we need additional fiber, cap, uh, fiber capacity to the Board of Ed. Um, it's not able to handle the volume that we need, so we need another fiber run, $11,000. Uh, library window replacement um, is part of the um, project. There's about nine windows that are not in Pacton. Um, my recommendation is since those, those windows are over 30 years old and are, are rotting, that, uh, that we replace them at the same time so they match. Uh, and um, Then the old library roof replacement, um, a section of it would need to be replaced by the addition and, but there's a balance, the flat roof, um, $30,000 uh, to, to do that at the same time. Uh, I will say that both of these um, are kind of included in the bid that will be going out. Uh, and if the bid comes in, we're, we're pretty close to on the project estimator uh, came in. Um, so we're pretty close, but we'll, we'll know once you open the bid. Uh, uh, police station air conditioning, uh, it's hard to believe that uh, that building's up there, but um, it's time to start replacing units. Um, whether you don't want to fund the whole thing, I just thought doing it at once. 
again, some of the criteria I should have set for American Rescue are, are more one-time expenses versus ongoing expenses um, and things that aren't going to add to our operating budget in the future. But um, we just found mold in the uh, police station um, um, air conditioning the top air handling system. So we're going to have to go in and pay like 14000 just to clean the mold out. Um, seems like a good time to replace it instead of just clean it. Uh, the, the dispatch area is failing. Uh, so we have to, at minimum, we'd have to do the dispatch area. Um, you know, these systems run, especially the dispatch area, it's 24 hours a day. They create a positive atmosphere, so they're a little harder running. Um, you want the, uh, you don't want the pressure, you want the pressure in the dispatch area higher than the pressure on the outside so that they are not uh, vulnerable to fumes coming in um, for terrorist reasons. Um, that's how police stations are planned and built. Kayak launch or other rec priority, uh, $18,000. Um, we, are, we are looking at whether there's other ways we can do the kayak launch. Um, had a, a facility, we may be able to reattach it to a police dock where, where it originally was done. We're going to have to move our police dock from near Lakeside. Uh, we're not welcome there anymore. Um, so the, it's going to have to go back to Patriots Park. Um, and uh, Lakeside will not have docks this year for their own use. Um, so um, another alternative, uh, we have cracks in the pickleball court and we're trying to get those prices updated to, to look at it, but uh, the pickleball group is not happy with the town right now and they're actually growing, a very growing group. Um, pickleball's in, it's an in sport, especially for seniors, easy entities. Um, South, South Street, uh, uh, Bill Richardson uh, design update, that's a council uh, goal to kind of update the, the plans to see how a, a comprehensive park would, would go, would, would uh, take all the pieces that we have. And in a capital budget, you see different variations of, of things. Uh, we need to kind of pull those all together and probably have some type of building committee or park committee uh, to represent all the people that would use uh, you know, the existing users and, and maybe new users. Um, to look at a comprehensive park. Uh, South Street substation, uh, fire station, um, we've been stalling on a generator. The generator that's there was moved up from the old fire station uh, mm -hmm. on, on Main Street. Uh, so that puts it in kind of 30 years old-ish. <laughs> um, um, and it's actually a little bit undersized, so we have to up, uh, just a little bit larger. Um, fire gear catch up. So in in the general operating budget, you saw us putting twenty five thousand. That's kind of an annual amount. Uh, some of our gear, that annual amount hasn't been enough. So we're proposing to do a one time, get the gear upgraded uh, um, by a few more sets. New this year, special fire ops gear. Uh, we have, uh, and Bud, uh, you're welcome to talk to Bud about all these things when they, they come in for fire. Um, one of the key things they need to do is buy some new uh, um, winter dive suits um, as part of the rescue squad. Uh, they're all custom made, they're very expensive. Um, GIS map and update corrections. Um, Finance already heard that I'm not happy with our base mapping on what we're publicly putting up on uh, for public use. Uh, we need some outside help to get the, the old assessor's maps corrected, uh, bring in the A2 maps that we have available. Um, and it's not something that we have the, the capability for, but right now, if you go on our GIS site, you see property lines going through houses, and, and uh, I just really hate having bad information with our name on it. Um, in electronic document management, uh, we're out of space. Um, our first 
office uh, goal is trying to get all our building files um, um, scanned and, and available online. Um, a lot of towns have just thrown that information out. I don't want to ever throw that information out. It's very, very important for old you know, septic tests and wells or housing inspections and so forth. We're not legally obligated, but it's very helpful to home buyers and, and existing homeowners to, to have those records. Um, but we're out of space everywhere. Uh, uh, our fire line cabinets in, in my office are now boxes on the floor because we're not room more rooms uh, for, for stuff. Um, so we really need to get into a multi-year electronic document management system. Um, Capital Not Recurring Expenditures Fund, uh, annual contribution of zero in, uh, three projects to, to take out, um, a zero radius mower, um, the smaller one, with, uh, one of our rights is, is an example of that, an infield ball groomer, we're adding extra ball fields, our ball field groomer is very old, um, and that, that's how you rake out the infields versus hand raking. You can do them about you know, five minutes versus about three hours, uh, and the product is better. And then exterior work at uh, George, George Hersey Robertson. Uh, they replaced uh, a lot of the staircases uh, at the building, but we need to do the sidewalks around, and I think this also may have enough money to do some work at Country Grammar School. I need to keep looking at it. Oh, that's what I was going to mention, just that I was at Coventry Grammar School yesterday and was observing the asphalt sidewalks mm -hmm. around the back of the building, and they are cracking up. So you had talked about the trip hazard posed by carpet over time. I think you're also dealing with the trip hazard. I think they're worse right outside the kindergarten wing, too, between the kindergarten and the, the kindergarten playground. So um, that I just want to make sure we don't lose track of that, because they'd originally asked, for I think forty thousand for both GHR and CGS, so I, I want to know CGS. Or they could take it another fund because <laughs> it's in the capital improvement. Um, um, proposing one lease purchase, um, we a lot of our our lake roads we go in there with uh, Ford F uh, five hundred and fifty uh, dump trucks because the big dump trucks. You, can't turn them around. Um, so uh, proposing a, a five-year lease purchase. Uh, trucks, um, who knows what they're really gonna be by the time we order them and where we're gonna get them, but with the sander and, uh, and plow, it's about $95,000. Um, so uh, this would go into our debt service of $20,000 a year. And we don't really have a decreasing debt service this year, uh, so um, that will be uh, an issue. So debt service. Um, you know, it declined and then you can see that we started picking up and starting a decline, but it goes out into the future. Um, in a couple of years we have a bigger drop. So um, this is this is the year we're in. You can see that the capital leases are, are in the green. Um, some of those are actually re releasing fire trucks for like a million dollars. Um, clean water loans are for our sewers, and those actually kind of end uh, relatively soon in, in a few years. Um, so as we're looking at our capital capacity, uh, while we I'm going to propose, and it's up to you again, um, a couple capital projects uh, for bonding. Um, while they could be approved either, depending on how fast you want to move, they could be approved with your town meeting um, and budget vote, or, or they could wait till fall. Um, but once we have the authorization, uh, some of these things, are, we'll have to get into that on project by project in terms of um, what that kind of six month delay uh, will cause uh, to a project you're pushing things out of here. But we would not borrow it until this year here. Uh, so we wouldn't borrow the money. Once we have authorization, you can start design work and, and, and so forth. We can borrow from ourselves from our fund balance in a sense. Uh, but we would 
try to trigger this gain here in debt service capacity uh, for when we actually borrow the money. So you're talking 2025, 2026? Yeah. So, I mean, just like right now, we're, we're going to market, hopefully in, in, uh, in March, for projects that were approved like a year and a half ago, two years ago, because mm -hmm. we, didn't, we didn't need the money yet. And now we're rushing to, to try to get to market because rates are starting to like rocket, so we don't want to wait any longer. And we need, we did, need the money for the summer for the roof replacements. Um, so uh, we're working with our financial advisor to, to try to get that done. Um, can't believe it's February already, um, but you know, we'll have to see how fast we can get, keep going. Uh, and then just some general statewide comparisons. Uh, I think it's important to note that our per capita debt service um, has had a just general decline, and here's the state average for uh, towns for their annual debt service. Um, so we're kind of generally heading in the right direction, and the state is increasing that. Uh, so I think we are showing that we're being fiscally prudent. So new projects uh, included. Um, the, we have, the school building committee has, has engaged in a renovate as new for the high school and middle school complex. Uh, what that would do, uh, would develop a plan in between now and the end of, uh, end of this fiscal year to look at taking the existing middle school and high school and renovate it as if it were new buildings. Uh, that would look at the programmatic needs, but we have a lot of capital projects in there, like uh, weight room and um, lockers and carpeting and new seats in the, um, uh, in the lecture hall. And um, you start adding all those up and there's no grants for those unless you run a rate as new. So we won't know the cost of that till Quisenberry uh, finishes that up. Uh, they're meeting with the Board of Ed uh, staff right now to look at the programmatic changes they may need. Um, but as a renovate as new, we could get 55% uh, paid for by the state. So we're already doing the roofs, so that's you know, one of, at least the high school roofs being done. So that's one of the things. We're getting money for that. Uh, the renovate as new would include new window replacement, uh, which those windows uh, are old, very old. Um, so with window replacements, you always have to be worried about uh, PCBs and other, other things. Um, um, used as caulking materials uh, back in the day. Um, so we need to come up with an estimate, we just don't know. And, and the renovated as new will actually give a lot of credence to one of the council's goals of uh, trying to develop what our long-term costs are going to be. Uh, so I put in a $5 million placeholder, which would be our share of, of a renovated as new project for the high school, uh, middle school. So it would be, be like $10 million. Yeah. Uh, so that's just a placeholder, and we'll know until the study's done. When you was going through that, that's a real problem I had, I'm sure you're aware of it. They're renovating you for a high school for 550 students, and you're adding a little wing for young. is $110 million to renovate as new. So to come in for $10 million, that's a hell of a problem. Yeah. So we won't know until we have this. What I will say is that... Our boilers are good because those are only seven years old. Uh, both buildings, uh, the one in the middle school, we just replaced burners, but the, they're cast iron boilers and our, our uh, HVAC uh, tech uh, firms, um, ICDS, looked at them and said, oh, those are going to go another 40 years. What you need to do is prove that there's a 20 year life left in, in, in stuff. So we've, we've removed a lot of the asbestos. And, um, there's uh, some classrooms that are 
that are tile over asbestos, so those glasses, we'd have to go down and do some asbestos removal, but a lot of the asbestos are out of those buildings, just except for a few areas where they tiled over in a high school. Um, um, so, again, the building committee um, thought it was worth looking at this as a way, because as part of that, um, you know, we would get other HVAC work done which is why we also picked <coughs> the high school uh, to do because of the combined roof. But the middle school unit ventilators are older um, and they don't meet code. So we would probably do the same type of unit ventilators in the ceiling, which as part of this, then air conditioning would be qualified. It would qualify for 55% too. So it's a study. We won't know until we have results on, on what it is. So I'm gonna say it one more time. The five million is a placeholder of our share, um, and timing-wise, it's a couple of years process. So the council would need to by late May, early June, um, um, by late late May, early June, would have to make a decision whether. You're going to commit that you're going to hold a referendum by November, or or we wait a year. But there's a whole process that you have to have that kind of process through the state. So it's almost like two years away at the earliest, because it goes through as a large project. It has to go through the full legislative session. So if, um, it wouldn't it wouldn't really happen until early June of uh, 2024 at the earliest. And you probably don't have time to do plans and specifications for that construction season. So it's really probably 2025. So as you look at the age of the buildings, you look at something that, that's still going to be like four years off. Um, Excuse me. Where are you getting the five million from? Are you uh, bonding that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we were bonded at the, the appropriate time. Uh, so, again, not this current coming fiscal year, but at least, the, at least the next year. Okay. And we, we can't borrow too early because you have something called arbitrage uh, where you're investing the money and you're not supposed to borrow money to make money. Mm -hmm. Used to be it used to be okay. It was, it was, a, good deal. <laughs> it was a good deal. It was a good deal back in the day. Um, um, so new this year, uh, for discussion purposes in the capital budget, I'm proposing um, that we start talking about a community center in the capital plan because you're looking at, you know, it's a long-term plan. I can tell you that the dining hall at Patriots Park has about three or four years left. That's it. This is the blue building. The big dining hall where we have all our winter market used to. Yes. yes. Um, right up next to the road. Um, I never heard it called the dining hall before. I haven't oh. heard it called the dining hall before yeah. either. It's well, the first it was going back then, isn't it? It, it was the work. Salvation Army yeah. camp. I thought you meant the summer hall. camp building. It was, it was the dining hall for that. It was a summer building only. It's built on stilts. Yeah. It, um, I got a community development block grant because we had zero recreation space. So we got a $225,000 grant that added the, added the bathrooms, added the entranceway. Um, but um, what I did basically is I looked up the price um, of what a community center would cost. It's about four hundred dollars a square foot. Um, so you can decide whether to have that in here or not. Uh, but I think at some point we're going to need a new co community facility, and I would not recommend that we spend money on that facility, and then we won't have an after-school program or any rec, rec, rec space. Um, there's a concept plan that I've sketched out where you could actually tear down that building and the building the schools are using, which used to be the Scout building. Um, maybe buy the house next door, maybe not. Depends how it fits, but you could actually build it into the hill at the top, have, have drop, drop off parking in the front, parking kind of where the building is now into the cemetery. You'd have a great view of the lake. Um, could be a two-story building, 
where you'd have kind of a, a big meeting hall, wedding facility, whatever, on the upper level with a deck overlooking the lake. And downstairs underneath you could have a preschool program and modest kind of uh, maybe athletic uh, you know, weight, weight and fitness equipment uh, and areas for yoga and yoga classes and things like that. And the rec, rec office would probably then move down there too. You don't mean preschool program, you mean the before and after school The program. after school program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah after school. But that, that would remind you as when we're looking at the renovated new, those are portable classrooms that have a, have a 20 year life. Uh, and then the floors start right now. Uh, so um, that could actually merge into the building. Um, so again, just whether you want to start talking about it or not, or have it a placeholder, put it out. I, I, you know, it's, it's a big ticket item, um, but I think at some point we're going to need some type of facility. Um, expand Miller Richardson as a full athletic facility, additional road and culvert work. Um, uh, so we have at least three culverts uh, that aren't in our program. Uh, we're added in. Uh, when you look through, I urge you to look at some of the pictures of them cracking like hell uh, and, uh, and the price tag, which are just scary. And now we believe that there'll be some um, rent money coming around, um, but in the, in the um, we'll get to um, how I'm proposing to pay for it um, in a minute. Um, gave you a sketch of a uh, town hall um, proper meeting space. To this building is, it was built, uh, this was the building that those portable classrooms replaced. Uh, the school was going to tear it down and I had it dragged over and put here because we we're just out of space here at the town hall. Um, and show you how we could build a, a meeting hall off the end of the building, which is originally was going to be a state grant, but the price of construction just keeps going up. But um, this meeting, this room is not really right for a, a good public meeting. Um, and um, and then a sewer plan expansion or connection to Wyndham, which we're having a meeting next week? This week? This week. Thursdays. We don't have time this week. Um, so again, real opportunities for funding, I think. Uh, so we have to figure this out. Um, but. Um, So we've stopped, uh, we've slowed up a little bit just to staff capacity on the, the Bolton line sewer because we just don't have capacity to do everything at once. We just don't. Uh, but the, we think that this has the biggest opportunity that I've seen in a long time for, for getting uh, significant money. And their capacity mm -hmm. is good. Uh, went up. They have advanced treatment versus our plant, and our plant it, it's holding us up from a lot of economic development on this side of town. Uh, it's also affordable housing and or senior housing. Um, we just don't have capacity right now. Um, so, Thank you. should we be considering anything when we look at big projects in the future? Should should there be anything for senior housing in there, or that's completely separate and we're not going to work? I know there was the whole senior housing presentation. I know there's a committee. I know it has to do with our goals, so I just wanted to raise it. Yeah. Um, we don't really have anything, like a concrete plan. Yeah. Does that matter? Um, or result. We didn't have plans for a lot of that. So I just didn't know if it should be on the list. I, I just started that. Well, I guess. My thought is, is that it's too premature uh, and that uh, I believe that the private sector with some state and federal subsidies will address that issue. So the town may need to look at what land we have uh, as our contribution. And we do have a couple things, that are, a couple parcels that have been identified as, as you know, potential uh, for that. Um, so, 
let me just say this this scares me too much as it is <laughs> and and you guys can can decide if you want to substitute something or not, or not. how would we come up with a dollar amount for well I mean, if you want to look at new you know pick a number of units and multiply yeah. by I don't know, two hundred fifty dollars a, a square foot, um, and and then land and and utilities uh, on top of that. I mean, new construction is really expensive. I don't know how we would. Um I mean, how many units do you? Want? I mean, that those decisions haven't even been made yet. Yeah. You know, the yeah. more the more density you have, uh, the more cost effective it is because the land costs kind of gets shrunk as part of the cost per square foot. Um, but how many units do we, can we market? We haven't done a marketing study to even know. I mean, are we talking, do we need 10 units? Do we need 150 units? Don't know. Yeah, more studies needed. Um, I'm actually look at what surrounding towns have done, because I know we've talked a lot of surrounding towns just to get a placeholder. I mean, we have a placeholder in for, for other stuff. I don't know. I just don't want it to, to not be reflected anywhere, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, so if you're worried about it getting lost lost in the shuffle, um, I'm, <laughs> confident, <laughs> I'm confident that won't happen for a couple of reasons. One is we have it as a council goal to establish a permanent committee, mm -hmm. um, and it will be their job to develop further information so that we actually have the we have all the, the numbers and the data and, and locations that we could then have something a little more concrete to yeah. fit into a plan like I, I guess for these other for the things that are on here we have some sketches and plans and sense of dollar amounts John's been trying to get this town hall expansion for about 30 years and I, we understand why. Yeah. <laughs> you had a great concept design when we were trying for that steep grant. Um, but they're a little more concrete. We can actually come up with reasonable dollar amounts, but I don't know. You want, you want the really wild one. Let's go to New Elementary School and we'll move up to Coventry Grammar School as the town hall. Okay, stop. Well, keep going. Town hall it's, it's 10 o'clock, so keep going. Thank you. Because that, you actually just. You actually just asked the question I was going to ask. I, I, not that I think it needs to be in this next five-year uh, capital improvement plan, but uh, when I see um, Birch Grove, so the work <laughs> that's being proposed, um, that's yeah, right, that's being proposed for our middle school, high school complex. But you know, I'm well aware that we have two very aging elementary schools in town. Is there work, is there planning that could be done over the course of the next five years so that when it's time to come up with our next five-year capital improvement plan, we're prepared with some real numbers or real options for addressing the needs of our two elementary schools? Um, we've looked at options and kind of know what, what we should be thinking about. The so I'm sorry, we'll leave that to the next town meeting. Well, well, realistically, you want my plan? My plan is we had a wing on the Robertson School, get out of the grammar school. Uh, uh, and um, the grammar school would be more suitable to, it, it's really almost like an office complex. You've got rows of, mm -hmm. rows of things and you can have like, and you got a little gym area so it could actually serve as kind of it would a... It would be like the L.P. Wilson Center in Windsor. That's so, exactly what they did with the former elementary school. And the advantage to that is, is, you know, you get new school construction money. At a much higher reimbursement rate, but it's a larger amount. Well, you get 55%, uh, but, you know, in the building, you basically get a building that you just have to renovate versus mm -hmm. build new. But... The scene is done under the talents, definitely. Or, or it's turned into housing. Which is the other thing you do, and the grammar school could make it a, a really nice housing complex. Anyway, uh, no, that's not in here, um, and partly because the board vet hasn't asked for it. Okay. So, 
those types of projects usually come to the board. Uh, so what I'm proposing is a $3 million bond. Um, again, should be as early as voting with the, with the town meeting or, or wait till fall. Um, that we would start working on, on some stuff. So this is right out of the, the report that we got a couple weeks ago, the orange text. Um, map of kind of the, the town and uh, showing where we are. But So what we're looking at is, what I'm proposing is $3 million. Uh, I've asked Bill to, to, before he comes in here, to give a specific list of the roads uh, using that software. Uh, we'll have to include Loomis Lane, some Lake Region roads, and also the Pilgrim Hills subdivision. Um, so Pilgrim Hills includes Mark Drive, La La Lathrop Drive, Alice Drive, Harriet. Uh, Connecticut Water has already committed to uh, partnering with us where they would replace the water mains in advance and then give us uh, the final restoration money so that would offset our costs. Uh, it also avoids the issue of you putting a road in and then, then taking it up to replace the water mains the next year, which is usually what happens. Uh, so they've already committed to that. So we would only be spending about $1.5 million on roads versus the $3 million uh, that uh, um, was suggested in the bonding. I tried to run some numbers and it's against as I have said, this is already kind of scary. <coughs> but we would replace two culverts, uh, Parker Bridge and Parker Hill. Um, that requires a local match of 1.3 million. Uh, when you look at the projects, these culverts are expensive. And this is counting on using the getting, uh, acquiring with the local bridge uh, program, which is a 50% funding. Uh, there are some other projects that may be coming. Uh, we don't know. I know that the local bridge program will be coming out uh, in a couple months. And we have our applications pretty much done, uh, ready. What we don't have ready is the match. But those culverts have to be replaced. Um, and our payloader is really old. And if that payload breaks during a snowstorm, I don't have a good way to fill a truck up with salt. It takes a long time to do, use a backhoe. It's really hard to get a backhoe up that height uh, to dump into the dump truck. So it's time. We gotta, we gotta buy a new payloader. So a couple pictures on the culvert replacements. Um, Bunker Hill, it's a one and a half million dollar project. 727 local match. Um, kind of here are the cracks. Um, here's the, the bottom. Um, it's bad. It's tired. Um, 1955. Almost as old as me. Um, Parker Bridge. <laughs> this is the steel steel rusting out. Um, here are the cracks in the, in the sidewalls. Just kind of to look at it. Um, 1.1 million, 551, 551 match. Now this does not include Broadway, which uh, is another issue. We, we did a temporary pipe uh, as it, when it washed out. The pipe was undersized. Uh, a full drainage shed study uh, has to be done because of flooding issues in that area. Um, and the pipe is definitely out of obstruction. Um, it's temporary. Uh, and um, that will not be an order of magnitude here because that will just be a pipe under a road versus uh, these are really bridges. Uh, yeah. uh, so, some unique issues to deal with water is the in some, some ways there's going to be a bridge over a bridge because um, we won't have to do water management and we'll kind of build over this and then take it out from underneath. So otherwise we have to 
a lot of water flowing through it, and it's really expensive to try to dewater that. So they have some creative designs to try to deal with that. Um, so the payloader, uh, we will keep our 1988 L90. Uh, that's the year I got here. If you go to shopping malls, you see these old payloaders. And we actually do have a big push box for them. We would probably like leave it up here for for, for doing the high school lots, um, uh, and then it'd be a spare if something happens. Because you know, any, any hydraulic tool, you blow a line, or something, it's out for a couple of days, and parts aren't as reliable as they used to be. Um, so, what's well, not included? Did include a typo. Um, this test. Um, the wind code compliance work, which uh, we're on the home stretch of. Um, we're hoping we have a little money left. Um, I'm waiting for the Blasi Engineering to get the prices. Once they found out, they had the April vacation to do some work. Uh, I think they, they stopped working on this. Um, but we'll be doing some work. We hope to finish that up this summer. And we will be looking actually towards the council giving us money this budget year to get that work done and get that off our list. Um, building committee is um, working on on that, um, and then they want to be kind of discharged. Uh, so there may be. At some point, that committee is having difficulty. Uh, uh, the chairman uh, moved out of town. Um, so at some point, we may need to move it into the other building committee. Uh, but if we were on the home stretch, I think now is just to do the work. So I can add in senior housing is not included. Uh, I can add in uh, other things uh, to uh, new elementary school. Might be a way to keep a record. Yep. Um, to keep a reminder in there. Yeah. Right? So. Yes. <coughs> um, there's a lot of details in here. This was actually just an overview. You really have to go through and spend a lot of time on. Hundreds of pages. Um, just short of 400. <coughs> Question for you: uh, The police chief's car. Yeah. When he gives up that car, does that go back into the? It's it's actually not a cruiser. Oh, you don't buy cruises and run them down. Um, I, we're waiting to see what the next chief will, will want as an alternative. Um, these are actually a little less money than a cruiser, but uh, there are a lot of departments that do a, a cruiser, and every year a new cruiser comes in, you cycle. Yes, that, that, that's often done, but, um, you know, it's just a Ford sedan right now, um, not a cruiser. So. Thank you. Uh, in, in the town I came from, they actually, the town manager got a police cruiser every year. The old, old one, right? No, he got, he got the new one. You got the new one? Yeah. yeah. The reason for that actually was very logical. Police cruisers go through their warranty in like usually six months. Mm -hmm. When the top manager would, would drive it, it would be under warranty the whole time with an easier break in period. There you go. Any uh, questions for John about the capital improvement plan since we still have executive session? I'm going to skip executive sessions tonight. I can wait. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we will put your concern. Can you email me to remind me that it needs to be on the next agenda? The problem is they're, they're going out to bid. Now, you, this thing's getting to the point where it's almost of no return. Well, you, you <coughs> shared that concern. <coughs> um. Is what you want to talk about something we can do under one of the well, the way that you've got items. it structured, you could e legally go under it. It just doesn't state it. That's a um, and we don't have 
I mean, the question is, we're not going to touch it down for another two or three weeks. They're already having walkthroughs. It'll be two weeks. And that's without having any contract. Uh, I, I guess the question so is, don't does Robert have any can... contract negotiation? Well, I don't know that there's something to really maybe discuss you want further. To, maybe you want to go into executive sessions because there's there's a difference of opinion on what you're talking about. And I think we're going to take that on the table. Okay, so, so you under thing? contracts? Uh, it'd be contracts. Okay, so let's just do that one, Marty. Yeah. And you can say for the purpose of talking about the library uh, transfer. Okay. Yeah, it could be property. I move that the town council enter into executive session pursuant to Connecticut general statutes. 1-206E, discussion of any matter which would result in the disclosure of public records or the information thereof contained. Described in subsection B of, of section 1 210 with the following people in, oh, uh, with a focus on the library, following people in attendance, uh, all of the council members, John Alcesser, and Amanda still here. Amanda's still here. I'll just turn the recording off. Okay, and Amanda, uh, our finance Is there a second to that second. motion? Second. There's a motion by Marty to go into executive session under contract, seconded by John Hamm, we are in executive session. Well, we, we have to vote on that.